Start the music. Hello, everybody. I want to thank you for being here. Welcome to the Chemisphere. It is 10.02 p.m. here in Ghana, West Africa. Give us about uh, five minutes to, uh, well, I'm waiting on Boss Chick. She's backstage. I'm waiting on a couple of moderators to come in. Again, thank you for, for being here. Um, if you would like to join the live as a guest and tell your story, the link is in the chat. Boss Chick, are you here? What up, though, Radiant Shadow? If you talking, Boss Chick, I can't hear you. If you would like to join the live and come up and tell your story, uh, the, the link is in the chat. 
we're talking about what age should adult children leave home. If you have been an adult child living in the home, you can tell your experience. If you are an adult with adult children living in the home, you can also come up. Say something, boss uh, chick. Can you check your welcome. audio? A little, a little like this. <laughs> Is this your place? Hi, no. Sonia. Thanks no, no, for coming no, no, in. No, 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 no. I live with my mom. Oh. Yeah. You hungry? Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? Chaz, I think I'm okay. I, I had a bite right before I came over. Thank you. <laughs> so good, that movie. Um, most young adults want to stay at home to save cash, but when do you think parents should turf them out? It is really important to take responsibility for your own life, reach adulthood, and as parents... I think that we should be preparing our kids for that eventuality um, a long time in advance. Um, I think generally the trend toward an extended adolescence with people putting off important life decisions like getting married or settling down is not great. Um, and with responsibility should also come freedom. It's important, I think, that young adults make their own choices and find a path forward in life without being hovered over and told what to do. Like whatever people always talk about like helicopter parents or whatever. Um, that's true in the small setting of the family. And it's equally true for a community like the Bruderhof, where young people who grow up here are encouraged, you know, to go out and experience life somewhere else, whether that means, you know, going to college or getting a job, living on their own, you know, whatever. But I guess what I've been thinking, I'm wondering if there are limitations in that direction as well. Like following your dreams and being a self-made person is great and all, you know, but isn't it also kind of missing something? Because each of us is born into some kind of a community of people who supported us, you know, and support us as we grow. And it seems to me, it seems somehow wrong to just like move on from that relationship relationship and do your own thing and to, you know to give back to the community or the the family that gave you love. Right, right. i think you can learn a lot from other people's experiences and knowing that a lot of you guys haven't moved out yet this is a good video to watch so there's definitely been a lot of change recently um with moving away from family i expected things to be different but i didn't expect it to be overwhelming and it has been overwhelming. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie in terms of the classes and Islamic studies. Those are going really, really well. The, the, the teachers are amazing. The brotherhood is great. Um, but I think it's just that this is just it. You know what I mean? Like you're moved out now. You don't need to be taking care of you. You don't have anyone on your head, making sure that you've done your homework, making sure that, you know, you're, you're doing all the things things you're supposed to do nobody's there anymore the only person even your roommates right like i have roommates but we're not checking up on each other like yo did you finish your homework yo you said you were gonna go to the gym you said you were gonna you know make a youtube video no one's checking up on you the only person now that can keep you in check is yourself and that's why building that that discipline from a young age is so so important because i thought i had it down like i, I that was part of my personality i'm like yeah i'm a disciplined person i'm motivated i'm this and that now i'm starting to realize that that a lot of it was just my parents, right? Which is which is a good thing. But a lot of it came from the pressure of trying to make them happy or just maybe the fear of, you know, getting in trouble or whatever if I don't finish my stuff. But now that that, that pressure isn't there anymore, I've become a lot more relaxed, which is not a good thing for me. If any of you know me in person, you know that I'm very, very, like, I have to always stay busy. I'm always doing something. That's just how I operate. But ever since moving out, now that that pressure isn't i don't need i don't know exactly what it is but it's just it's a lack of responsibility it's a lack of accountability boss chick are you taking yourself off stage yes i can hear you TG says, I believe. Okay, can you hear can y'all hear us? Yeah. I can hear you. 
I believe that parents need to teach the kids savings, have at least three months to be teach able to rent in case something happens. Savings, have at least three months to be able to pay in case something happens. Thank on you, that Washington. situation. Because if I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have left home at the age that I left home. Right, 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 right. What would you have done and different? Hero Fat, would you like to come up and tell I your story? I tried to stay home a little bit longer to get my money developed. Um, I'm going through this right now. I have an 18 year old and a nine year old. The same. Mine's is 10 years apart, 18 and eight. So, does anybody think that it's okay to put kids out at 18? And again, if you have a story to tell, you would like to be a guest on stage, we will bring you up so that we can hear your voice. Please in the chat. So I did move out at 18. I didn't have to move out at 18, but again, you know, you think you've grown. You as you grow up as children. The first thing you want is to get your own place. And I moved out of my mom's house into my own apartment. I was bored. I was lonely. And three days to a week, I was back at my mom's house, spend the night every night. And I never went back home again until I moved out. Like, I never went back home. I missed my neighborhood, the kids I grew up with. I was away from everything that I knew at 18. And so I ended up right back at my mom's house and was happy as hell because I was back in my comfort zone. You on stage or let me add you. Okay. Hello, Harifat. Quickly, what's your story? Thanks for coming up. Is she behind stage? Okay. Okay. I had to close out the other window, but um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, yes, ma'am. I, as you see, I have an 18 year old and a nine year old. What I did, um, over time, because I, I had my 18 year old when I was 18, <laughs> I graduated high school pregnant. Um, I walked across the stage. I was very proud of myself and my family was too. I went straight from high school into college. Um, I did not abide by my parents' rules, obviously. So my mom was like, Hey, you want to be grown? Go be grown out there. I, she never, um, how can I say, she didn't force me out or say, hey, at 18, you got to move. She never did that. Th there was always an open door and there still is. I'm 40 years old. She still says you can come home. But what I did with my children and what I continue to do now in the early years, like the preteen years, I tried to teach them how to communicate well, um, communicate their emotions effectively so that they, you know, when they go out into the world, nobody's going to sit and oh, I'm so sorry that you don't like that you have to wash the dishes or I'm so sorry that you don't like you have to turn this report in for work or that doesn't, you know, that's not the real world. Right. Nobody cares about right. you. Feeling. Right. So I think that one thing that is a big, and I, the, the younger uh, gentleman that was on that recording, the videos you showed, I agree with him wholeheartedly. It's overwhelming. And part of that overwhelming feeling is emotional. There is no one to keep you accountable. Literally. Um, and that's what I experienced with a baby. So imagine that like my first uh, I, I feel like I did fairly well um, in my early years. I, my first place was an actual house, um, all that stuff. But yet and still, my mom taught me finances. So now my 18 year old and I are sitting down. She's about to get her first job. Um, I work for the Zon. If y'all know, <laughs> I work for Amazon. Um, so she plans okay. to start there. And it, it's a tough environment. It's a corporate world, you know, um, just because, you know, I'm in a warehouse. It doesn't mean it operates any differently. Uh, so we're we're working on how to handle your finances, set up your savings, those types of things. I've told her as long as you want to live here, you can live here. She doesn't plan on having a spouse or anything right now. So I'm not one of those people get out. You know, I, I don't believe in that type of thing because that's my baby. You know, other people right. at certain things, certain countries, even I see the children live in the household until they get married. Um, and, and the countries I've been in, that's how it is. Ghana's like that. Yeah. And before Ghana, I went to Mexico and Mexico, they have family homes. Nobody has to move out. 
And see, I think that's very, it, it helps the person, uh, the, the individual that's needing to move or wanting to have to move. It helps them to grow slowly and in an environment that's supportive because I'm going to tell you, Lord knows my first here in America and I'm, I'm part native American and um, African American. So it's, I'm brown, brown everywhere. I work in construction outside of Amazon. So I'm not accepted <laughs> anywhere. I'm a woman doing all the things that women should not do, including right. overcoming being a, a teen mom. So I, um, I didn't want my child to go through that and the world didn't get any sweeter or nicer. People are rude. Have you ever horrible. lived on the reservation? I lived on a reservation um, for six months. I did not have a bad experience, but it was not the life for me. I felt that I'm, I'm more Americanized in the way that I grew up. I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida. When I was on the reservation, I stayed with a family member and I just, um, it's it's kind of, I, I resonate with you when you said I wasn't connected to the land and I was right here in America. Um, it's just, yes. I didn't connect with that group of people. Now I know why it's because, and I, I believe this strongly, I'm a spiritualist. And if you check out anybody, check out my channel. I, it's tarot. It has nothing to do with this. I enjoy watching your channel for the cultural exposure. That's what I missed about going out there, to be honest. Okay. 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 Now, now when you, now you were lit, okay. You were living in, an, when you went to live on the reservation, you were living with adults as an adult. Yes. I went out there. Um, I was going through like financial issues at the time. I didn't have two kids. I only had my, my oldest. And so my oldest was with another family member and I moved in with a, a family member that's married to a, a, a native American. My sister married <laughs> one, one of those people on um, there and they allowed me to come and visit because I was like, I, she was trying to convince me to move to that area. And I was like, I don't know. All of our family is from Florida. She's out in what they, in Oklahoma. It's like the Texahoma area where Texas and Oklahoma uh, board border and i i was hesitant so that's why it was the same type of experience that you had like i was there to visit i wanted to see what it was like um even though i was thinking about moving there i resonate so much with your experiences for real because of those things um i didn't okay. stay because i didn't see i would have to become like uh like, you know, you can't live on that reservation without being like a, a, a certified in, indigenous person. I'm going to state it like that. Um, they make you do paperwork. They make you prove your lineage, all kinds of things that I feel is appropriate, you know, if, if that's okay. what the agreement was. So I just couldn't do that. Okay. And my sister married it. And so, <laughs> yeah, I left. OK. Boss Chick, do you have any questions? Can y'all hear me? Yes. yes ma'am. I have an echo. Hold on. If anybody would like to come up to the stage, please click the link. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. ma'am. I have to log in for like three different devices. I'm like, man. <laughs> Um, I agree with everything she said, pretty much being a young parent, if you know what you knew, what you know now that it would probably be much easier for us to be like, oh, we're going to stay home. We're going to make this thing work where, you know, like somebody else said in the comments, you got to teach your kids how to save. Who was that? That was correct. Yeah. Could tell you, TT. What? Yeah, I think it was Katalia TT one of them. I can't find a comment, but I think it's important because I, I never was taught like, oh, well, yeah, you got to pay this bill. You got to pay that bill. I just thought I was like, okay, my mama was doing it. I could do it. Let me get out here, figure out how to do it. But when you have that baby, it's like, which way do you go? Left, right? You don't know. Like you're stuck. You wish you had that extra time at home for your mom to show you like, this is how it goes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yep, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, so now you have an 18 year old living in the home, right? An yes, 18 ma year old. Now, and do you have do you do you prepare for do you already prepare in your mind for things to go left or you don't think that way? What do you mean prepare for things? Like left? she's 18 now. She might start to do things that you don't like or agree with. And she's going to say, but mom, I'm 18. I'm grown. 
Oh yeah, I'm I'm prepared for that. Like my mama did me. You want to be grown? You want to learn on your own? Go out there. It's not that I'm putting them oh. out, but I'm telling them like if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. I'm not forcing right, you exactly. to be here. I'm just being that right, parent. Right. Like the same situation the other day, I was fussing at him about something, and I ain't gonna even say necessarily say fussing. I was talking to him about something, and it's like what I'm saying. He's he has no agreement. He's like like okay, mama, you right. Nothing. He has nothing to say. So five minutes later, my phone ring, and I'm like. Okay, well, what he want now? Oh, my car tow up. It's on the side of the road. What do I do? You don't even know how to get the car. Do I put it in neutral? Like, you need your parents. So you need that that information from your parents. Like, you haven't been through situations. And you need to learn stuff from your parents that you may not know. Don't just think that you're grown and you're like, oh, I can do it on my own. I can. You're not. You're going to always need somebody. And the best person to need is your parents because they're not going to steer you wrong. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yep, yep. Titi, would you like to come up? Do you have a story, a, an adult living situation story? If you would like to come up, please click the link in the chat. And Angela says, no, no later than 20. Angela, no later than 20 at any, no, under no circumstance, they should be out at 20. Would you like to come up? I don't know what age is a good age to tell them to leave. Like, 21, you're not grown. Like, I have another video we could play. But I do want to show, share this. Amen. 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 That was a good one. I absolutely love that video. Kim, I think it's an individual thing as far as family living with you at a certain age. If the family member is doing what they need to do, I feel that's okay. I agree. Uh, I thought I saw TT up here. I'm here. Feel- I'm not going to stay up that long because y'all know I'm sick. So I that's don't great. think, just my opinion, I don't think that there's a certain age that I will put my grown kids out. Only because the world is different nowadays. Um, My oldest son, well, stepson who left, he was 26 when he actually left home. And he left the first time, but we let him come back because he had little bumps and bruises and, you know, in the road growing up or whatever. But I was raised where I was 13 when my mom passed. I was 24 when my dad passed and we lived a rough life. My grandma took me in when my mom passed and she taught us how to raise me, not to raise money, how to save money and have at least three months, if not six months worth of money in the bank. So just in case something happens, if you fall on hard times. Helpful information. Yes. Mm hmm. So with my son, the stepson, we had to embed that into him. And then my Mm -hmm. biological son, you know, the same way. So I wouldn't say necessarily at 18, I'm putting my kid out. Now, if he's into the streets and he ain't wanting to do better. Oh, yeah, you getting up. You getting up out of my house. You're not going to be in my house doing that because that's not what we're doing. Exactly. Or right. whatever. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily say 18. I wouldn't even do 20, even though we want our kids to get up there and be better and go learn and do stuff on their own. But we have to make sure they ready for the real world out there. Exactly. Correct. Yes. Correct. I think mm-hmm. 18 and 21 is pretty young. I definitely believe 18 is too young. Um, Imagine being in high school and you're a senior and you know that your parents have told you all your life that you got to be out at 18 and you're trying to focus on your senior year, but you know you're about to turn 18 at the same time on that day. You got to get out and go where and do what? Like, that's something I would never do. Correct. Yeah. Like, even um, even though when my daughter decides, okay, mom, because she said the same thing, TT, I completely agree with the comment earlier. My daughter said, mom, I want to stay at least through college. And I'm totally fine with that. She and I spoke and I was like, okay, if I teach you how to build your credit, you know, the savings thing, when she gets started working, uh, put a certain percentage into your 401k. Don't pull anything of it. Don't take out student loans. Like I did. I'm still paying on student, you know, setting her up financially, the things that I didn't Uh have. Just like you said, if I'd have known what I know now back then, I would be a millionaire. 
10 times over and mm -hmm. um, right me too <laughs> right exactly girl like it's like dang and not that my because yeah. my mom oh sorry my mom um I ate off China. You know, I, I grew up partly with my grandparents, but my mom lived in the household. She was well into her forties, you know, married and everything. But the way that our family operates and, and the things that we believe that's normal for us, for the elders to live in the household um, after they're at a certain age, like my, my family ran a business. I ate off China. I had the best clothes, but I grew up on a farm. People were like, no, you didn't eat off China. And like, yeah, no, I had, it was a whole cabinet. You couldn't touch none of that until <laughs> my grandma said, bring it out, you know? Um, and my girls, they don't, I, I agree with what, what Ricky's saying. You know, I have a sibling. You always got one in the bunch, <laughs> you know? Um, but I, I, I'm not putting my baby out at 18. That's mentally, they're still not developed yet for the stress of the world. I agree. Okay. Cause it it don't matter if they they think they're grown at twenty one. You can give them the opportunity to let them leave the house, but at the same time, give them that opportunity to come back if things get too mm -hmm. hard or get too overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. As far yep. as that boy said in the beginning of the presentation with with his situation, not knowing right. like, oh, your parents is really the ones that make you stay on top of stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Um, it's thank true. you, now, I was for becoming a member. I do appreciate you, and welcome to the chemosphere. Yes, I'm scrolling at these videos too. So if I don't say nothing for a while, I am still here. <laughs> we got D. As long as they can respect the rules of the house, this is a great fact. Yeah, because yes. you got some of these kids, which I'm not gonna say they all um, hand inside of your hand or outside of your hand, <laughs> depending on what color you is. But some kids is just like, no, you gotta you gotta let them go. You can't. No matter what you do, no matter what you tell them, it's like they want to live their own life, so you have to put them out. Mm -hmm. It's even yeah. to the point yeah. where some adult parents have to kind of evict their kids because they take advantage of it. It's true. Well, so I let me ask one. you, I was five, I only had one, and that was my Sagittarius, and I always specified that she was a Sagittarius because it just makes a difference. She was that one that was, she was in the A group in school. She was very, very popular. And in spite of having good grades, she had a problem with um, authority figures. And so she did not have a problem with the kids at school. And like I said, in spite of uh, having good grades, she was the one kid that got kicked out of the whole school district for about two semesters. You know, she did graduate, but um, she was the child that was in and out because she didn't want to follow rules. She was pretty much a party. She was she was that kid that wanted to party all the time, didn't obey the rules, sneaking, I mean, just doing everything. And so she was the only kid out of five that had to leave. But even with her, um, the door was always open. Like she came back, she, if she had to come back, she could come back. It wasn't a big deal. But when she would come back, she just she just was who she was and she couldn't get it right till I had to tell her, you know, you have to stay in your own house. Get it together. That way we 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 we, we won't have a problem. Can I ask a question, Miss Kim, to you for you? Yes. When you um because I expect my daughter to come back <laughs> when she decides to leave, I do expect it. Cause I did, you know, like it was a shock when you decided to allow, you know, that child back into the household, did you uh, set expectations? Like what was the dynamic to that? Like, you know, what happened? Not details, but you know, how did you present the, like, this is the stage, this is how things are going to be. Or did you just let them move in? Well, she, she, she started coming over. My kids come at least, at least one of my kids come over every single day. Usually it's all of them. They'll pop in every, every day. They'll pop in and out, check on me, except the ones that moved out of state or out of the country. Um, so she started coming over every day and I kind of had a feeling that she wanted to move out of her apartment for whatever reason. I didn't know. And uh, when she finally, I, I did, ended up asking her and she did, she said, Ma, I just want to come home. And so we talked about the things that bothered me the last time I put her out and what are we going to do about that? How are we going to fix it? We came to an agreement. You know, me, I know that she's an adult and I know that she likes to party. And then, I, but I let her know that she did not have a key at all. I was not going to give her a key, but she knew, I knew because I knew she liked to party. I was like, okay. 
on the weekends, whatever nights you're partying, can you try to be in by three? You know, I can I can prepare myself to for that knock on the door and let you in. But um, we agreed to different things in the house. She uh, loved to do hair. It bothered me to have to have hair in the bathroom sink and things like that. Once she moved back in, she was cool for about a week and everything went back to normal and she was out the door again. Okay. Okay. I feel like I'm going to have to um, learn how to let her be her own autonomous person. Like when you ask, like, are you ready for <laughs> like, when well, she was the, the situation was, it was, it was toxic. Her mm -hmm. and I, our relationship was toxic and it was toxic because we were two completely different people. And she was a full adult that lived a totally different life from me. And she, I don't think if she wanted to be in her own rule, she could do it because she just was who she was. And when you realize a person is who they are and they're not going to change that it, when it becomes toxic, you have to just go ahead and put that tough love down and let them go. And the yeah. last time she left her house, she lived a very, very hard life out there because she continued to choose to make the wrong decisions. Yeah, that yeah. When it gets to the toxicity and starts to affect, I always tell myself if it starts to make me feel some type of way about me, it's time to stop this. <laughs> yes. So, you are you in a situation where you might have to let somebody go? Um, not in a a parent child dynamic. No. Um, sibling sibling wise, like I said, it's always one in a bunch. Um, that's why I ask because this person and I go through that same, you know, push pull type of energy, like. And that's the can't get right in my family. <laughs> like everybody, just, everybody says it. However, I have rules and we live two different lifestyles. The person that you're describing is sort of kind of what I deal with. She's she liked to be the life of the party. Like promise you, if I share her Instagram, you giggle your head off because she's she's like that comedic energy in the room. So but she's okay. and that's the thing that bothers me. She's never serious. She takes liberties with other people's things. And, you know, like it's just we're just two different people. <laughs> Now, have you had so, the talk already? Oh, several times. I've just come to the conclusion that I'm not able to help her in the way that she desires. Like, living with me is just not going to be it. And okay, then it's time for you to have that hard conversation and it's time for her to go. Oh, yes. That's, that's been, that's yeah. Opinion. Yeah, that's or been the done. ultimatum. Give her the option like, hey, do you want this help? Or if you want to be grown, go ahead. I, that's I, what I was getting ready to say. Yeah, I definitely receive all of that because I've done all of that in the past. But just like how Miss Kim just said, it got to the point where it was toxic for me and my household at the end of the day. Yeah, you and don't have this, to deal with that. Exactly. A, I don't have to deal with it. And two, I have people that are still under 18. Legally, my oldest daughter can, you know, take watch, she, yeah, take watch her, take mm -hmm. care of herself. But my nine year old, who's going to, you know, not that she doesn't have people, just like Ricky said, we got people to call on. But Still, nobody's gonna love you like mom. So, um, or but she has family. to be the one that set example for that eight year old too. Exactly, yeah. And that's my sister. That's not my 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 eighteen year old. I've never had. She's a virgin. She loves the Lord. She's uh, you know, top tier student as well. She does not have this crazy up and down lifestyle. She, you know, she's very mild manner. <laughs> I'm I'm blessed to have the children that I have. My nine year old is a Leo, so I get you with the Sag thing. She's your child. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We all have one. We all have. But one. I appreciate oh. y'all's advice. I'm still use that because I know she's gonna try to come back. Yeah, and but you gotta put your feet down, and it's it's really hard to leave our families out in the street or leave them yeah. in situations where they're uncomfortable. But again, they pull on your heartstrings, mm -hmm. and before you know it, they're back in the door again. So right. what right. I have. Exactly. I ended up, this is how see, this is how it was because I know that's my child. She can pull on my heartstrings. I blocked every number she called me from. I had to <laughs> oh, wow. stand strong and be strong. And I blocked her from everything. And when I tell you this girl made fake, fake Instagram accounts, fake anything to get in touch with me. <laughs> and um, but in the end, we ended up, we ended up, you know, bonding and being real cool. So I was here three years. The three years I was here, I kept my house and she closed it down for me in October. So she was at my house the whole time. Whenever I left to go to Ghana, she was the one at my house. So we did men, you know, men that broken bridge. 
she still is who she is, but she learned how to tone it down a bit enough where I where I could deal with it. And see, that's a person that's trying to be receptive to you. I don't have that. So I think I might need to do what you did and just go cold turkey. You know, I I, I like to leave the door open in case that person needs help. But you are saying the same things that my, my own mom told me, like, hey, baby, <laughs> look, even I don't, you know, because the per she just she does not appreciate. There's no gratitude. And that's where I feel Ricky on. You know, I think he's talking that's to the probably people. why she's not at your mom's house. Yeah. Oh, no. Exactly. My mom, she, my mom lives in a different state. She keeps trying to get my mom's address. My mom's like, she gave me the <laughs> exactly. P.O. box. <laughs> she gave me the P.O. Exactly. box. <laughs> so, I mean, like I said, you, it just might be the time to just go ahead and do that tough love and, and cut her off. Let her see how those streets are. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm, I appreciate and trust. I'm, resonating and i'm receiving i appreciate y'all gratitude giving definitely thank you thank you i appreciate you coming up so i have a question to go a little bit more deep into it do you feel as though at 18 if the kids don't go to college or anything we know they must get a job but do you feel as though that a parent should charge the kid some type of rent of course Oh, yes. I'm charging my daughter rent. That's why she's getting a job. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, want her okay. to learn. This is not that's a, teaching a game. Responsibility. Yeah. yeah that's right. Responsibility. Right. I don't. I didn't uh, know. Okay. I, I totally agree. I mean, I, let me just jump in to say this because I'm going to be the eyeball. I <laughs> did not charge my kids the rent when they when they had to come in my house. I did not charge them rent. You know, they bought food and took care of the things that we needed in the house. But I did like nothing in me could charge them rent. I just don't. I mean, I just, even I just if it's just a hundred dollars out of their paycheck, but, well, they need to learn some responsibility. Yeah. yeah so uh, even if it's you taking the rent or whatever it is, putting it to the side. And when mm -hmm. they're of ready course. to move out, giving yes. them that money. So that way they yes. have. That's you know, right. like a down payment or something. Yeah. Not necessarily. All I asked them was, you know, if you're going to stay here, I didn't charge them any rent. The deal is save your money and be prepared to get out of here in two or three months. Right. That You know, right. you have to come back home. The have kids that had to come back home. Um, well, let me see. I have. Actually, I got I don't know. I still only had one that had to keep coming back. And that was a Sagittarius, honestly. Uh, let me see. One, two. Yeah. The rest of them probably came back. I have a daughter, my baby daughter, who came on here to tell y'all I was okay. She moved out with her husband. She's never moved back in, ever. So she moved out after she got married. She never moved back in. There's some times when she'll come and like she'll miss her mama. And she'll be sad and her husband will ask her, like, you miss your mama, huh? Why don't you just go, just go spend a couple of days with your mama? So she'll come stay a couple of days with me. But um, the one son that did move back in a couple of times, he lived in Mexico. Uh, he was a single dad. So he what he did was he uh, would bring his kids to me and he would stay a couple days because the wife was gone. So I would basically keep the children. But um, the one time he had to move back in for about five months, he just kind of took care of business without me having to have him pay rent. But I knew he wasn't coming to stay. It was a temporary situation. So I didn't charge him rent. But I do agree that, you know, charging your children rent, there's nothing bad about it. I don't disagree with it. I just didn't do it personally. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. It makes and in the situation, that makes sense. Yeah. You don't want to kick them while it down. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Like my daughter has a long term plan to stay here. So have a long term plan to like, uh, you know, she was saying, take that money, put it into a savings or IUL or build some wealth, not just richness, but wealth for a long lasting time. Right. But Don, right. What, what do you mean? What is the parent leave home? Can you rephrase that for us? Like, and if I need up, to drop down for up? somebody else to come, no, yeah. I will. just let me okay. know. No, you're fine. We got some more spots over there. I just want to okay. know what she mean. Like, do the parents pick up and leave the home and yes, just leave the house to the kids? Because they're going to be in Who there said with no lights. Ladon? Mo, Who was it? Um, it's posted check. on the um, it's posted on the chat. Ladon Malone. What is the parents leave home? What is the parents leave home? <laughs> 
Uh, can you come up and what if the I can't even find the uh oh what is the put it back, boss chick? What is the parents leave home? Are you saying what if we get frustrated and leave our own house? That's what I want to know. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Ladon, can you come up stage? Can you click the link and come up? I'm oh, that's definitely not doing that. So when I'm going through this right now. I have an 18 year old. Yeah, we got that one. I believe that parents need to teach the kids savings have at least three months to be able to pay rent in case this is a fact. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Thanks for coming in. Katalia, uh, well, I have three boys. My oldest son has his own, but he, if he falls short on hard times, my boys can come home. My grandma always had an open agree. door policy. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You could always go to grandma's house or auntie's house. I have an auntie right now. I can go and lay. I, she got a oh, hold yeah. on. Yeah, grandma's door is always open. Well, my mom, my mama's door was always open. Uh, Malone, mm -hmm. can you come up and explain your comment, please? Okay, let's assume she. Let's assume she's saying, "What if the parent moves out?" So I'm. A, I'm assume she's saying, uh, "We get sick of our kids to move out of our own house." Um, mm -hmm. I, that's a no for me. That's that's that's. <laughs> yeah. I can see the frustration. I can see it. I really can, but that would be a no for me. But to, yeah, to, have to, to get so frustrated and leave my own home. I taught my kids some life lessons that I failed at in phase based on certain factors. I can't wait to talk about this. Okay, we got that. Hi, Barbara. Make sure y'all like, comment, hit the like button, and subscribe. Thank you. If you would like to uh, join the chat, please hit the link in the description, in, uh, the link in the comments, and we'll bring you on stage. The conversation is: uh, At what age is it okay? What at what at what age should adult children leave the home? And we've gotten a lot of different answers. Now I'm focused on this other one that says, what if the parent leaves the home? <laughs> and that's yes. just kind of stuck in my head right now. So, so in how do you feel about I mean, do you think, has anybody been in a situation where they was ready to leave their own home? I'm pretty I'm sure. sure. I, I have, I have yeah. some I'm videos sure on the base and all. But TT, when you mm -hmm. said that your son left at 26, do you think that you set him up for success that he was ready to leave? So with my stepson, um, he was the one, he was the last one to actually leave. Um, mm -hmm. if, if I was involved way beforehand, absolutely, he would have been set up. But he was not set up until he actually moved in with me and my husband. Um, and then we started showing him and teaching him the finance of how it is or how important it is to save. We charged him rent, but when he left, we gave him that money to yeah. use while he was out there. Mm -hmm. And he appreciated now. He ain't been back in three years. Let me knock on some wood. Yes, uh, girl, good job. So he's doing good right now. And, you know, I, it's, I mean, it's rough out there because at first he left first, um, gone maybe about six months, came back home. I don't think I would ever tell my kids, no, they can't come back, depending on what they're doing out there. If they're not doing nothing, mm -mm, you can't walk through my door. You could come and visit, and we could sit down and talk, but you leave, you leave in the house that night. Right, right. You right, said don't even stay right. the night, huh? You're not, mm -mm, you're not even <laughs> staying the night. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. That's that, You know what? I, I need to do that with some people, like, because they linger, and they know they're not welcome, like like that right and i'll share a little story real quick boss chick uh well with you all before you start the videos with my with our oldest son the stepson um he got a girl pregnant um oh, the girl could not um stay with her mama or anything she was getting ready to be due maybe about two weeks or so and she got into a little altercation with her family so they put her out so he came to us and was like, hey, she's carrying my baby. She ain't got nowhere to go. Is it possible she could stay with us for a month? So we're like, you know, sure, no problem. You know, we could do a month. I didn't want to because, uh. 
but anywho, she ended up staying Did they sleep in separate week. rooms? <laughs> no, because she's already uh, Absolutely. Up. No, absolutely. <laughs> but I told him, I don't care if y'all got a baby. Y'all won't be doing nothing up in here. <laughs> now, if they did it yes. while I was gone, then it's different. You know what I'm saying? Right. But mm-mm, they was in separate rooms, um, the whole nine yards. Because I grew up old-fashioned. If I needed to have company at the house, my grandma was like, y'all not to be in the living room. You could mm-hmm. be in your room, yes. but the door's not to be open. Yep. yep. Or whatever. So it's like once we hit that year mark, I had to tell her, well, actually nine month mark, hey, you got about three months and you will need to be finding a place of your own because you got to get up out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Because we started yes. clashing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not getting ready to be uncomfortable inside my own. In my own. Right. Oh, Walking my. around with my yeah. face frowned up. Thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's no <laughs> way. Now I would like to ask you a question. When um when they heard the news, like not the news, but your decision, like, okay, this is the terms and no because some people would call that an ultimatum. Oh, how could you do that? Da, 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 da. What what was that like presenting it to them? How did they react? I guess I want to know. Like, because I need to prepare myself. So honestly, I truly believe that they was actually expecting it. Um, I don't think they, well, her, I don't think she actually thought that we was going to allow her to stay longer than what we did to stay as long as we did or whatever. But we're like, you know, she has our grandkid. We just can put the grandkid out. But I was at the point where, hey, you could leave, but the grandkid could stay. So yeah, she yeah. was pretty much accepted to it. You know, I um, helped. Both of them um, drove around trying to find places. Just she didn't feel overwhelmed or like I was just throwing her out there. Furniture, we helped them with the furniture, the whole nine yards. Um, So I think they was pretty much knew it was coming. So it wasn't like a negative feedback with us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They accepted it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you would like to join the chat, please click click the link in the description box. You, you got to start your video now, Boss Chick? No, we're going to look at some more comments before we look at some more videos. Okay. We have Katalia. I would never put my kids out at 18, not at all, but I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. Never went back at all. I agree. Wow. You it's were out hard. at 15? Wow. Yeah. She left at 15, she said. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's when I started Mm -hmm. thinking I was grown and started smelling myself. My mom was like, oh, you're grown? Go ahead. Get out. You're 16? But at the same time, I still went to school and I still graduated. So like like that boy said, I still wanted to make my parent proud. Right, right. Yeah. I would still like to hear about her experience, though, because I was allowed... um, you know, I had boyfriends and stuff, but it was the same thing. Come in the front door, leave out the front door. You know, y'all got to be seen. My grandma was the type, even married couples sleep in separate rooms because ain't no conjugating up in mm-hmm. here type thing. The only person conjugating her house is her. So, 15 is young. Yeah, 15 oh. is young. And I, 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 if she can hear us, I want to hear about that. Yeah. Now, she I'm just kind of like that too. I don't... Um, I, it's really weird when I have had to have married couples live in my house because you yeah. just don't want to accidentally hear nothing <laughs> at all. Right. And so well, shoot, they know, shouldn't even I, be doing nothing in nobody else's house. Yeah, you shouldn't feel comfortable <laughs> right. enough to do that in nobody else's house. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. I I agree. I mean, I did not have a will. problem with that. Yes, girl. I mean, if you got somebody coming out of town and they with their husband and you know, they just stay in a couple nights and you won't, you're probably going to hear some stuff. <laughs> this is why I want to be wealthy enough to have a mother-in-law a house. Yeah, no, a mother, be on a whole different something. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be, yeah. yeah. Go to your compound. Yeah, go to your compound, exactly. To the back, right. <laughs> My uncle actually said something about that. He's like, we should start a family compound. Basically yes. keeping the money coming back to the yep. family. coming to the family. Yeah. That's literally what the name is. And it's, it's are doing. a good idea. If the family can work like that, it's a good idea. It People can. should yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. how it should be. We shouldn't it have should. to all separate and be in different states and countries and across trying and struggling right. to pay 
five different mortgages and five different rents when we can all just kind of find a way to live together. Yeah, we got one, now, two, three grandmas in one area babysitting all the kids while the exactly. adults outside, you know, plowing the field, yep. pulling apples and stuff off the tree for the family yep. to sit down and eat 15 deep later. You know, I would think that would be a successful family. And that's how a lot yes. of people family stay together. Yep. Like you, what, yeah. who said that? The Native Americans still do that? Yeah, I, I uh, said that because they do. They still do Mexicans, it in Tijuana for sure. Yep, the, um, it's a lot of Africans. Yep, um, it's something called an Osu that my aunt told me about. She's married to um, <laughs> a Ghanaian man, so that's why I started watching it. I told my auntie that I was like, "Look," and um, but yeah, so they have something called an Osu where you put like the family collectively puts a certain amount in each month, and then at a certain time in the year that they all agree upon, one person gets the pot, and they do that every year. Yes. And it rotates who gets the pot, and that I mean yes. we're starting one. My dad's you know, talking with other family, trying to get a family compound started. Cause I mean, let's be real. Nowadays they have things like martial law where they can come in and just take over your house stating that it's for the governmental need and all this other stuff. I don't want to go experience in that, you know? Um, and it happens mostly in developed cities. So we gotta, we gotta, you know, I, I agree. Teach them why they're young. I, I, I think 18 is still, at, getting out of the house that's too young mentally it's just not gonna happen now, emotionally think, if you talk about we have like a compound okay yeah they're they're right down the street I can exactly but exactly to literally just put them out and be like you go stay in dallas and i stay here in florida like no i told my daughter know which way to go right i told my daughter don't be surprised if she tried to move out of state and i'm sitting in the living room when she come home because <laughs> i'm stalking you yes i know I that's right your sister's with your auntie and i'm stalking you it's nice i like to fly so let me fly the issue seems Same to come down business. to one thing that this is wealth. Most Gen Y and Gen Z don't have the wealth to buy a home. Totally right, right safe brother. Yep. Uh, I, I saw think something. That Gen Y and Gen Z. Well, okay. I think that's like my generation, like the 40, ages 40. Yeah. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. Because what is the Bayman boom, Boomers was like the born in the Six sixties, seventies, yeah. Yeah. Because I think my mom's a boomer, yeah. No, 18 is too young. I have three adult kids and they all left around the age of 21, which 21 is still to me young. Because when I had my I baby at 21, I, so. I huh? I think 21 is young. Yeah. Just because it's the legal age you can buy alcohol yeah, and that's cigarettes what I was and stuff, say. that don't mean you're mm -hmm. wrong. <laughs> and they they take that and then that's so crazy like they're too young to to realize self-harm behaviors and all these other things that over time as an mm -hmm. as in our age you like okay my response cannot keep being i lash out at people like i gotta get that under control that's a normal mental development that's going on there that needs to happen and you cannot do that between the ages of 18 21 i'm not down on anybody um miss kanye if you if you feel like your children was good to go that's hey by all means you did good girl because that's a young age and that means that they were mature mm -hmm. and that's rare so congratulations like for real because i i don't think my daughter's even as smart as she is i don't think she's mature enough to handle this world she's gullible exactly that's what i was going to touch base yeah. on like the gullibility of them. Oh, let me go hang with my friend, not knowing what kind of situation you could put yourself in your friend with your friend. Mm -hmm, exactly. You could become a co-defendant just trying to be chilling and hanging with your friend. Girl, be living in different pods, chilling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, depending on circumstances, if a eighteen-year-old wants to sell drugs and break the law, they gotta go. Period. Period. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, a whole that, different situation. Yep. yep, they have to go. They exactly. gotta go, and it's. It I'm is gonna a, respond to a uh, brother, uh, safe brother's comment. I'm just gonna give my opinion. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily they have the wealth or not have the wealth, but what I will say is I'm a baby boomer. I, I'm I'm considered one of the baby boomers, and I knew I was different. I I, I knew I was different, but as I got older, I knew for sure that like I'm different than the rest of the world. I never ever. There's only once in my life that I wanted to buy a home. And that's because it was across the street from my job. And it was a big home with an attic and a basement. And it reminded me of the homes in Detroit that, you know, I grew up in. And it was just, it was just so raggedy. But by the time I went to get in touch with the city to see about the house, it was being demolished. So other than that, I've never had the desire to own a home because 
I knew that I was not a stable person. I got bored with things really quick. Oh, I that's didn't a like Capricorn. <laughs> I didn't like commitments and attachments. Like I could at the drop of a hat, I could get up and be gone right now. And I just that's so I, I never I don't like car Capricorn. loans. Yeah, I had one car loan in my life and it drove me crazy. And once I paid that car off, I never, ever got another car loan because it was <laughs> something I no had mind. to do every month, no matter what. So <laughs> I wanted to just say that it might not necessarily be that they don't have the wealth because um, I did. I mean, I had the money to do things that I wanted to do. I could have bought a home. I, I just wasn't interested because, like I said, it's too hard for me to stay attached to one thing for too long. And I think I like ruin other people's lives and ruin my own life because I just, it's some issue where I just could get tired of you really quick or tired of this person, place or thing. It could be anything. And just That's out of nowhere, I just can't deal with it no, no more. I move every two years. If I, <laughs> I, I get that bored and I move. Yeah, it, was, it probably is a Capricorn thing yeah. for sure. Maybe it's a Libra thing too, because that's my mom. She jumped from Florida <laughs> wow. to Chicago to Tennessee. I don't know where she's going oh, she next. She's talking about traveler. Texas. Girl, she's a nomad. <laughs> what age? I'm do probably you a nomad and don't know about it. About birth control. Oh, uh, I can that's take that one. Uh, now I'm going to ask you young. that question. 13, maybe, when they yep. start hitting puberty. I think right, yep. think right. I think puberty is the time, like because yeah. you don't know what they're doing. You, I don't care what the hell y'all say y'all doing and not doing. Mm -hmm. We don't know what you're doing, so it's easier to just mm -hmm. go ahead and, and give you this shot or this pill or whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. they gave me that little baby at school, and I was like, uh uh girl, that freaked <laughs> me out. I I did not like. We had that. to that carry an egg. <laughs> yeah, my granddaughter <laughs> had the egg. egg. Yeah, <laughs> my daughter had it. Yeah, the new generation had. Uh, Rosie said, "Change like, is good." What do you mean? Um, change is good, but go I back, Kim. That... Go up to one of her comments. Okay, Rosie, she has a cup. Yeah, it's not easy for me to go oh, back because yeah. this thing. The children are it's wiser, like, but yeah, we that's it. This one, okay. Let me see. The children are wiser but weaker. They know they know about technology but not able to manage their emotions. The brain doesn't develop until age 25. Um, I kind of disagree with that. The children are wiser but weaker. Um, I see some okay, first of all, these They're kids growing of up. Technology. These kids growing up have a lot of they, okay, they, for, for one, these children it cannot be children. They're almost not allowed to be children. You know, you can, okay, let's let's skip to 18. Let's skip, skip to 16. You can commit intentionally or accidentally commit a crime at 16 years old and be charged as an adult and put in an adult, adult prison. So one, these children don't, they're not allowed to be full children. They have parents that's forcing them into sports they don't want to be in. I'll never forget my daughter, the one that, the one, the baby that came on, you know, to let y'all know I was okay. Um, she, she, she was like, I was a track star in high school from elementary through high school. She, nobody could beat her running. Like nobody in the neighborhood, the schools, nobody could beat her running. I probably told this story. So I put her on Detroit's track, uh, a track team in Detroit and she hated it. And I remember she let this little bitty boy beat her in the hundred yard dash. So I'm like, why are you not running right? Like what's going on? And she told me, she said, mommy, I don't want to be on a team. I just like running for fun. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to do this every day. So I understood and took her off the team. But had I forced her to remain on that track team, that would have, I would have stolen a part of her childhood. So I don't know if it's, if they're weaker or whatever the situation is. I just think every circumstance is different because I know some children that are very wise and very strong. And I know a lot of children that has come from their homes are so messed up. They don't have a choice but to be either weak, weak, weak or mentally ill. We have a lot of mental illness going on now. So yes. um, I, yeah, I really don't even know how to respond to that. Yeah. You see, what did you, what you say about technology? It comes a lot from the technology is what they were saying. Like 
they're wise, but they're weak because they're they're brainwashed. Oh, this is how we should be flexing our money, or this is what we should have uh-huh. nice cars. They're they're seeing uh-huh. like the idols that they're watching on. Uh huh. Uh-huh. She said she was talking about the mental pressure of today. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, okay. I, I agree with that. I, I do agree mm-hmm. with that. Um, I do. I remember uh, my daughter, my uh, my granddaughter. Uh, she was probably in the one that just graduated high school. She was probably in, I don't know, fifth grade. And I don't know. I don't remember the iPhone number that was out then. But let me say the iPhone six. Let me say iPhone seven was out, and we bought her iPhone six, and she would keep it in her pocket. And she was shamed to pull it out. And I asked her one day, like, why are you shamed to pull your iPhone out? She said, because <laughs> grandma, it's the iPhone. I'm gonna just say it's the iPhone 6. And I was a like, what's wrong with iPhone Not 6? Even a six a I, right, oh, I didn't Lord. know that the school she went to was like this. She went to like a private school, but I didn't know that the people at the school was like really into fashion and name brand mm-hmm. stuff and things like that. And so it made a big difference that she had last year's iPhone. Yes. Uh, but so, yeah, I mean, can you imagine just you got an iPhone in the fifth grade and you shame to pull it out because you don't have the newest one? I didn't grow right. up like that. Right. Uh, may I say something along the lines of the electronics and the, you know, stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Um, I have, it, because y'all know 18 and nine, right? So both of them are growing up in the technology age, but I have, mm-hmm. I remind them all the time. What you saying that about that iPhone is Kim. I remember when your Apple was Macintosh. Okay. I remember when uh, yeah. TVs yeah. were big, big boxes with two big speaker things and some, I don't know the, what those covers were. That sat <laughs> yeah. <on the> floor. <laughs> that sat on the floor. Yeah. Exactly. I remember eight tracks. I remember like, I'm not that young, but I'm not that old either. And, and I know Miss Kim remember it. You know, she lived through a lot of that age. And yeah. it's funny how they exactly like the, I think it takes I think the technology takes away the social interaction aspect. I was forced to if I had a problem. I remember the first time I had a, a disagreement with a friend girl of mine at school. It was a middle school child like y'all ain't got no problems. in. really, I ain't had no problems. <laughs> so what I'm mad right. for. And the girl was just poking the bear and I was getting ready to fight and people are like i never seen you like this and i just realized then like this is my behavior and even at that young age gaining emotional intelligence like it took away it if you get mad at somebody on the internet what you do block there's no there's no closure there's no let me tell you off let me clear my mind that's why i said like along the lines of people coming at you no speak your peace and then walk away because at the end of the day you got to clear mm-hmm. your cipher so that you can receive forgive them so you're not blocked for and you know wish blessings on them just like god said wish blessings on your enemy pray blessings for them because he'll only bless you even more so i'm i i it, i think it takes away that interaction like this right here yeah they yeah. this right here what's exactly. wrong with you know like the the um Taking going to the park and skateboarding and all that type of stuff. Like I remember sitting in trees with my friends, the magnolia trees. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like I grew up on the park. Scotch. Hop scotch, girl. Look, yeah, don't get it twisted yeah. with that double dutch. I mean, all of our games were outside. We stayed outside. outside. We didn't go in the yeah. house. Yep, I had dogs. As soon as you won the house, one of your parents yeah. wanted you to do something. No, do something. Yep. <laughs> no, nope. oh, yeah. I hated snapping peas. I, that was it. Doing <laughs> something. I stayed out the door. We we even stayed out the door. This is what I tell people. So funny. I ate off China, but I grew up on a farm. I did not want to go inside so bad. You know those water spigots? Like they would put a faucet and it curved down like a cane. <laughs> we had those all over uh-huh. the property. And I would go to those to get water versus going inside to get cold. Yep. Exactly. My That's why people drink out of water holes. Oh, the water holes. Yeah. Yeah. Or the water holes. Yep. Yep. My grandma had pecan trees, plum trees, like little stuff. Out yes. Like, like, Fig we'll trees. Go yes. Out there, we'll, oh. So we don't have to go in the house. Don't that go in the house. Time right. We did that, though, because we was going to get a whooping and we had to stay out the door all day. Because she said, every time <laughs> one of y'all come in, I'm going to get one of y'all. So y'all going to get tired. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Kenny said he was always outside. Always. You're right, Kenny. Right. What did TT say? Believe, I believe, depending on the circumstances, I feel if they are in school, no, they should stay at home. And now, if they're they not trying to better themselves, I feel they need to be on their own. Agreed. Correct, TT. Agreed. Because they're gonna need yeah. that help when they're in school. I mean, just like that boy was saying, he needed his parents to still say, "Hey, get your assignment done." 
make sure you go to work class on time. Like they still need that. So no, use I, social media to meet up and fight or that was another point yeah. I was gonna touch base on with the cyber bullying and how the yeah. kids nowadays they wanna oh, they wanna be bad and they be like, Oh, let's go put this on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Not realizing yeah. this is forever now. This is forever. It's in the it's in the atmosphere. Yeah, but you and you know what? Somebody says something about forgive your enemies and you know, miss wish them well. You know, for the first you know, I'm 61 years old, I'm grown, grown, but for the first what time in my life. Due to social media, I I, I find it hard. I, I'm finding it hard to forgive people and wish them well. And I thought that strange because I've never been that person. And now that I'm on social media and it, mm-hmm. social media kind of hit me overnight and in the face, I am really finding it hard to forgive people and wish them well. And I, I'm telling you, I've never experienced that before. So that's something mm-hmm. I have to pray about on my own self. Like I really have to pray about that because I need I, to forgive a lot of people and I need to wish them well. And I refuse. And I, I, think, I think I'm just, God knows that I don't want to be that way, but right now that's why I'm stuck. And I just kind of leave that between me and God. But yeah, so I can understand how social media can do to what it can do to these young children's minds. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's too much already. And then trying to learn how to survive on your own. Some parents need their children to stay home for various reasons, such as if the parent has health issues and needs someone to help them with different responsibilities. I've seen that as well. Um, well, some kids do like to leave the home, but then end up having to move back because of that situation. Detroit yeah. to Africa. What up, though? Where are you from in Detroit? I say let them stay until 25, but save their money and make plans. Right, TJ? TT, that is what my 18-year-old said. I play I plan to stay while I'm college, at least. Rosie, Kim, I think it's an individual thing as far as families living with you at a certain age. If the family member is doing what they need to do, I feel that is right. Mm-hmm. You don't, you ain't trying to help nobody. Ain't trying That's to help true. yourself. Yeah, I agree. Forgiveness is not Forgiveness easy is- as people. Go ahead, Miss Kim. Forgiveness is not easy as people make it, um, especially when people have wronged you first. That's true, Kenny. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is, you know, cyber, you know, social media is a whole different world. It's a whole different ball game. You know, we know how to handle hurt and pain in real life. We know how to handle bullies in real life. But to be attacked by somebody you don't know for sure at all, never met, they don't know you, it, and they're attacking you and you cannot fight back, mm-hmm. it's hard. So I think that's a lot, that has a lot to do with the fact that I don't know how to forgive and let the situation go. But me, but me not letting it go and was constantly fighting back every day was draining me. It was draining me to fight. It was draining me to not fight. And so when I deactivated my page for that 24 hours, you know, God did a lot for me then because I have not fought or fought back anymore since then mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And I thank God for that. Let go and let go. Yeah, that's the peace that I'm talking yep. about. Yeah, that's what I said. Let it, you know, let it go. Wishing well, like I'm not going to retaliate, but that don't mm-hmm. mean I got to be in your atmosphere and you be in mine. Now, I have definitely cut people off because they just wronged me and I don't see no getting it right. And even if still you violated a trust that I had for you, you know. You ain't supposed to trust nobody, really, but I allowed you in there, and you know, you just, yeah. it's just wrong. And then, if you, yeah. and then, especially if I don't know you, it's even more a slight because who the hell are you to even come in my atmosphere with that? Right, right. I understand. It's true. It's true. It's true. Oh, this is Menelik from, okay, it's you use the different page. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Any comments or questions? Anybody need to come up? Uh, click the link. No, I got to delete this. Hold on. This this computer is typing everything I'm saying. (laughs) 
Boss Chick, can you post the link? Because every time I breathe, this computer is typing it. Yeah. This was a really good topic. Um, just engagement wise, also. Mm -hmm. So, I think oh, we yeah. think each time you get on, coming up with a different type of um, topic, I think will be good too. Yeah, I thought this yeah. was very engaging yeah. that it'll keep yeah. people interested. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I believe every child is different, it truly depends on their maturity level. I got my first apartment at 19 and was very responsible and worked and finish my education however they furnished my apartment. Yep. That's okay. Yeah. That's reasonable though. <laughs> I feel. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Kim also in Maryland the average rent is 1,800 for a one bedroom. Oh my god. Some places you have to even pay for parking. That is not uh, nah, California has started yeah. to do that where you have to pay for parking. And if a garage, if it's like an apartment or a townhouse with a garage, not only do you have to pay for parking, but you have to pay extra for the garage, even though it comes with your, your house or your apartment. Your dwelling. I just yeah. think that's so strange. I just really, really what? don't understand that. In apartment complex. Park, it, so give me a house oh, where I can park. Really? I know how to parallel park, but it, it makes me like anxious. Like, oh my God, I got to keep backing up, going for it. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. like parallel parking. Yeah, I don't try. We It wasn't on our test here in Florida. Like when I took it, it wasn't part of the test. So we never learned really like that. Like we did it in the class a couple of times, but exactly. that was a very short section. <laughs> and you barely, you barely need it. it unless you like going downtown. Or <laughs> you say you failed it. Right. I exactly. failed. <laughs> our Walmart just redid their parking things and we went to Walmart yesterday and they're handicapped parking. They have two freaking poles with a parking spot in between the damn poles and you can't pull in. You have to parallel park to get in there. Mm -hmm. I was pissed I, off. Our Walmart <laughs> got that one too. I was pissed. So I have a question because um, along everybody keeps mentioning the uh, money set up uh, how, what things do you think the child should be like taught as far as like money goes, financial uh, knowledge and stuff like that goes? PT, you got that. The 401k plans. Yeah. Money saving tips. Credit. I mean, if, oh, I mean all that's credit is a big one. And if they have a Kim job. Be back, though. Where'd she go? I oh, think she, she dropped. dropped. Let me send her a link. Okay. I think like if it's their first job, even if it's twenty five dollars, opening up a savings account, having them put twenty five dollars inside mm -hmm. that savings account, they won't gain a lot of money off of it, but at least they could see that they're getting something. Right. Um, well, I mean, my four hundred one k is kind of like twenty five fifty dollars, and yeah, after a couple years, it adds up. It adds up. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I know yep. uh, the I know the Zons. They uh, I'm, I told my daughter she's gonna put the highest percentage in her 401k thing because we can draw for that while she's in school, and it's you can get the tax while they draw it and don't have to worry about it on your tax return. Boom, money right, right there. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Boss Chick. Like um, credit, my grandma told me when I was in high school, um, I was just becoming a senior. Mm -hmm. She said we're gonna get you a credit card so we could start establishing your credit. I was like, well, hell, I don't even have a job yet. And she was like, it's okay. You know, I was collecting Social Security because my mom had passed. She says, and you don't have to spend a lot. So you spend, say, $25 one month. You um, pay that following month when the bill comes out, you pay $10 towards it. Yeah. Then that next month, you go ahead and you pay the card off just to start establishing some type of credit so I was scared at first and to this day I only have one credit card yeah, and I'm 51 wow. yeah. yeah yeah I got two yeah that's it well okay. you know I'm lying I do I have two now I, I do I have two <laughs> I just told yes. the story <laughs> 
I think it's better but, to have two in case like things happen with that one credit card. It get locked yeah. down or you have to, you know, fraud it's on that card and you got to wait for another replacement. You could be out of town. Yeah. Right. It's happening. And I just got my second credit card um, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And that's the only reason I, I think if I remember is why, because my one credit card had fraud on it and I had to get a new one. And I was like, ain't mm -hmm. this about a bleep bleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At one point I had like four and tax time came. I was like, okay, I'm going to pay this little 300. Pay it off. Yes, I paid off. Yep. I paid yep. off three of them and closed it, it out like after. It was getting too overwhelming because they yeah. had different dates that you had to make payments. So two is, I think two is good. Two yeah. is good, yeah. I don't have a time where I've charged both of them and the bill is like, you know, way outrageous. past due or outrageous. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can bounce off both of them, like use gas or use groceries with this one and then flop it because one has a higher level than the other. So it helps me, you know, but thank y'all for that. Okay. My three sons don't need to leave until they are financially able. We have this talk all the time. Even though they don't have to leave, are they wanting to leave? Like, eyes open. This is definitely, this is a difficult subject I came in on. I wouldn't say difficult. It was a good one, but yeah. How I guess it difficult? Uh, eyes, eyes open wide. Eyes open. I guess it more depends on the situation. The if you person, have an unruly yeah. child, if you have a good child, if yeah. you have a child that don't want to think they're grown, they want to hear so it's it's probably that's probably what she means is the difficult. Yeah, subject. that's why I stopped myself and I was like, it's probably the individual or something like that. Yeah, each situation different. Yeah. Okay. I didn't okay. charge mine's rent. What's your feelings as to why? My nine year old pays me nine dollars. She said she'll give me rent based on her age. She literally said, mm -hmm. she's a Leo. You are not going to bamboozle her. She saved up money for her own field trip. I had no idea she oh, did Oh, that's it. good. Yeah. yeah. It was like $75. She's, I was like, what? Kenny the, says, what? yes, savings account. My mom opened an account for me when I was in fourth grade with money my dad gave me for making the honor roll. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of my kids had savings accounts at uh, in, around high school. I think each one of them was high school. I'm on, and I'm on my uh, iPhone. Uh, the computer, oh, the computer came, the data came back on on the computer. Okay, let me see if I can switch back over. Okay, start. Um, yeah, this this was definitely a good topic. I Thank just you. never did charge them. They are all grown now and married. I just couldn't charge my babies for rent. Hey, Ebony. Am I in wash pit? Okay. Yes. Why not charge them rent and then save it for them for when they will? Good points. Good points. Um, let's see what. Hey, any more comments or questions? It's called a so so. We do it at our job with some people from. I think we touched base on that, right? Yeah, the so Susu. So. Yeah, the, I, yeah. I, was, I stand corrected. Yeah, thank you, Rosie. Well, do you put money in the account for them, even if they're not working and they don't know, you know, to help them be financially stable? Are, Are you asking, asking the question? question? Yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. Look at yeah. the girl. What, what's the girl name that had got stolen at birth and her parents had all that money for her, but when she finally aged out of the 18, y'all seen that story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She was yeah. mad I think about it her sounds money. familiar. Mm -hmm. Right. That, one that was an interesting movie. It really, really oh my was. God. I watched it more than once. And that was oh, another yeah. situation where she was taken from her mother. And when she connected with them, she just didn't feel that connection. Mm -hmm. You know, she was gone all her life and she didn't feel, she just didn't feel that connection. And I'm trying to. It's just the same as if we, whoever was stolen from Africa, when you come back here, you know, everybody's not going to feel that connection, whether this is their motherland or not. I'm trying to put okay, we're going to look at this video here because this was 
going back to some of those unruly kids. When they say, Hi, yeah, I have a check and Are account for my kids. Are you a mom that has an adult child living at home or maybe you're considering letting someone move back home? You said Renee said what? Oh, no, keep going. Keep oh, going. Okay. Keep, let the video play. If that's the case, this video is for you. My name is Sally Harris, and I'm a mom who walked a difficult path with my own daughter for over a decade. And while her life spiraled, so did mine. And I promise you, it does not have to be that way. And so today, I want to talk about that because I have a lot of moms that I serve that um, either have a child at home right now for various reasons, or they're considering letting them come back. And so there's some things that I always share with them that I want to share with you <clears throat> in regards to that. So one thing, the first and foremost is ask yourself why. Why are they moving back home? Is it because they're at home for summer during college? Is it because they lost their job? Are they getting a divorce? You know, those are pretty common reasons. Now, if they're homeless and they're not working and they refuse to get a job and all of that, then in my opinion, you're setting yourself up for failure, not because you don't love your child, but you can't help someone who's not willing to help themselves. So if they are at home, one of the biggest thing is to understand the motivation, right? Why are they coming home? You want to be able to have some clear guidelines so you can have a good relationship with them if they're living in your home, because I promise you and many of you already know this, is when we have an adult child, even a teenager that's you know getting up there, 17, 18, we're under so much stress walking on eggshells. And I want you to remember, because I very much remember this, that is something that is not okay. It's not okay for you. It's not okay for your husband, your other children, all of these factors. You know, It's very important that you realize having that, figuring out the motivation and having those clear expectations that if you're going to move back home, we're going to have a written agreement. And the thing is, is when you have a written agreement, those are expectations, right? So what happens when they don't abide by the expectations? What do you do, right? So that is um, definitely something we're going to talk about in a second, but um, having those clear expectations. Um, one of the biggest things that I see moms do when it comes to like enabling and they forget that their your adult children are at home. They need to be at home for a purpose. It's a season. It's a short season of, okay, I'm struggling right now for whatever reason. Like I said, I'm getting a divorce. I lost my job. Something happened. And you're there to help them out in the meantime. That's amazing that you can do that. But when we're talking about kids who are not willing to, um, you know, work their job, go to school, do the things that they're that so that they're functioning in life, then that is just enabling them by bringing them back home because then you're setting yourself up for failure and you're actually setting them up for failure too, in a sense, just because they don't see the value of a good hard day's work. Um, if mom and dad are providing everything, all their needs are met and they're not having to work and maybe there's drugs involved. Maybe there's not, maybe there's mental illness, not mental illness involved. Maybe there's not every family's different, but one of the thing is fostering their independence. Just make sure that if they're at home, you want to make sure that you're setting, trying to set them up for success because at the end of the day, you want to increase, you know, they need to have responsibility. Some of your kids may not even be, you may not be asking them to pay rent or participate in the household chores or anything like that. You want to encourage all of that. And, you know, one thing about the whole rent, I get a lot of people asking me, should I charge my adult child rent? Absolutely. Now, whether you want to hold on to that money and give that to them when they move out as you know, but it's, it's a basically the whole purpose of it. It's not because even if you don't need the money, it's not about that. It's about responsibility and knowing that these are sure ways that you know that they're saving money and it's helping them in the process. Maybe they struggle with that, you know, helping them with budgeting, helping them with those kinds of things. And if your relationship is a little tumultuous, then find somebody else on the outside that can help them do the, learn budgeting and learn all, all these things that maybe they're lacking. So, um, all right. So as far as um, encouraging. I think that's like a good point. Like what she's saying, like, cause some kids think that 
by you talking to them, you may be fussing them or you may be nagging at them, putting them down. But if somebody else steps in and shows them, that could be a good way, you know, for them to learn. Yes. Self-sufficiency. Yes. That was the other thing. I want to encourage you to make sure that you are doing that because they need essential life skills. Whether, you know, we talked about budgeting. What about cooking? What about doing laundry? What about all of these things? I talked to a lot of moms who have never stopped doing these things for their children. Now they're not 10 anymore, right? They're grown adults, but yet you're still out there doing all this stuff for them that they could be doing for themselves. Cole, he's my miracle child. I think where that's where I feel at because with my oldest son, I still like... No, don't touch my washing machine because I you might not do it right. Or I go outside and cut my own grass because I want it to look the way I want it to look. Uh-huh. Who's that talking? TT or Boss Chick? Me, Boss Chick. Um, I had, you know, I had a son that well, I mean, one of my sons, every day he cut he want he's one of the ones that come every day. And every day he comes over, he checked the yard, he start clipping. Uh, trees, bushes, whatever, and he's he always waters the grass, and that's something that I like to do. But then I realized that that's something that it was. I think it was relaxing for him to come to his mom's house and do that. Um, as far as the washing machine, all my kids know how to wash. I don't know any child that really don't know how to use a washer and dryer. That's an, an, an adult, but. I'm very picky about my things. I don't, y'all know me. I, I'm not, I, I don't live a lavish life, never have, but, but whatever I buy, I want it to be the best. Like I said like before, if you when I use the stuff, washing powder, I, you want to know that it's no more washing powder. So you might want to yeah. do it yourself. <laughs> so I don't want y'all pushing right. buttons working. I don't want you, don't be messing with my washing machine, please. Mm. Put your clothes in there. <laughs> let me come push the button. I'll push the buttons for you. Now that may, it might be a little controlling, but. Even when I wanted a stand mixer, when I was making soap and stuff, I bought the best, which was KitchenAid. And I didn't want nobody touching my damn KitchenAid. Don't touch it, please. Just look. I just, I don't know. I'm, that's probably a problem I have, but it, I, I have it. But they do know how to wash and dry clothes. Yeah, I gave my children chores like slowly, progressively over time. Like at a younger age, my youngest would help take out the trash because I didn't want her, you know, playing around in the sink and the dishes, using up all the dish detergent. Like, just mm -hmm. like you said, <laughs> like slow responsibility, but with supervision. Now she, she comes in, her, her job now is cleaning up the yard. She'll go out, pick up paper in the yard and all that stuff without being told, take out the trash, help with the dishes. It's, but yeah, same thing. I think that's probably like another reason why my son prefer to be at my house opposed to being at his dad's house because his dad gonna make him wash his own clothes. Make him he gonna, right. He's gonna make him <laughs> clean up the kitchen like me. And I'm like, son, do it. He'll oh, I'll do it later. No, I want it done now. Like, why wait? I'm about to get ready to cook. I want to cook in a clean kitchen. Go ahead and, and do it clean, now. You yep. have to like reiterate to him. Yeah, you're still out there doing all this stuff for them that they could be doing for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we want to slowly reduce your involvement in day-to-day -day life when it comes to chores, responsibilities, all these things that they need to learn. Now, maybe, you know, your son or daughter um, is having an issue with uh, drugs, for example. Well, my, my best recommendation as I'm not a therapist, but my best recommendation is to offer them rehab or counseling or something to help them with that. If they choose to not go that route, the door is open for that invitation in the perfect world, right? I would keep that door open for them, but you are not going to participate in their drug habit, right? You're not going to pay their bills so that they can spend their money on drugs. Um, you're feeding their drug habit is, is all that's happening here. And so I just want to encourage you to think about, think outside the box, think logistically, like think about what am I doing every time I give my son or daughter money, where is it going? And what am I supporting? And I know so many of you are doing that and you don't mean to, and it's not your goal. You're trying to keep your son or daughter happy and it's not your job. It's not your job to keep them happy. And so I just want to encourage you in all of that. But as far as um, just quickly want to go back to the expectations and what does that look like with consequences? You know, you need to take into consideration all the factors 
why they're home, what's going on, what is troubling you, what are your triggers, all of these things. But coming up with consequences is something that you and if you're married, you and your spouse have to do that together. So it's harmony in your home with you and your spouse, because the last thing you need is more um, issues at home with relationships, right? So with that, though, um, having those consequences is being ready to implement. And sometimes, depending on the situation, if there's drugs involved, sometimes, you know, moms do need to have the child exit the home immediately. And sometimes maybe you're going to give them a 30 day notice. You've got 30 days to find a job or you have 30 days to find a new place to live. And chances are, if that's the case, majority of the time, not always, but majority of the time, they will likely leave before then on their own because they don't want to wait for you to kick them out. Now, some of you have kids kind of the opposite where you'll have to literally, I know some parents who have had to do, um, you know, contact their county um, in their state in regards to having them evicted out of your own home. And that's not something we want to have to do. So our goal here is to make sure that we're setting them up for success and not failure, but they have to be a participant in that. So I hope that helps you today. If you are interested in my summer workshop series, the first one is coming up here in July on the 12th and that link below, you can join me there in the evening. Um, and the other two uh, workshops are also listed below. So I hope to see you there. Take care. She makes some interesting points. She does. I'll take away from the screen for a second. You said what? I left the screen for a second. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, she made some interesting points in, you know, setting your kids up for success, not for failure. So if you're washing their clothes or you literally one day I went outside, my son's car was dirty. I was like, let me wash this car instead of making him get out there and do it teaching him his own responsibility. You can't, you have to let them step up and be their own self. Right. And, and adding to that point, I was just going to say they have to, the parent has to accept that that is an autonomous person. They have their own mind, you know, their own thing going on. And if it doesn't mesh with what you have going on, then it's time to make hard decisions, you know, but trying to teach them and help them. I see what she's saying. She made some interesting points and techniques and how to um, slowly relinquish the responsibility to them. Sonia says, absolutely. Can you say kids today don't know how easy they have it? We had to literally chop wood out in the country. You ain't never lie. That the whole truth. I know my um dad can tell us like when he was younger that he had to go to work with his mom. Let me see, learn. I learned to cook, clean, mow and lawn and more when I was a child. It was beneficial, especially during COVID when people were freaking out about not being able to go to restaurants or cut their own hair. I agree. Mm -hmm. Like, where would we be if, you know, technology wasn't there or Uber Eats wasn't <laughs> Right. Like, these kids don't understand. Get in the kitchen. Make up right. a little, what is that? Pan we used to make pancakes out of flour. Me and my cousin. Put some sugar, some flour. Yeah. We hungry. Some cinnamon sugar, yeah. Like, my daughter was like, oh, you got a pancake mix. I can't make waffles. I'm like, we have yeah, flour, though. Yeah. yeah like, I was like, They'll I was never confused. know the struggles. Never. Having and I agree. I lived, lived off, off cheese toast. toast. As, long as, as long as we had cheese, and I Ooh, lived yes. off cheese toast and uh, grilled cheese. And my mama was hadn't made it home from work, and I was hungry. I mean, we knew how to make food. That was it. I don't care if it was just a lunch meat sandwich. One thing we didn't grow up as kids, we did not grow up without food. So I didn't have that struggle. But if it was, of course, it was things I didn't know how to cook. Like, you know, I couldn't make a whole meal. But if my mama hadn't made it home from work or if I came home from track practice and I was hungry, my go to was always a grilled cheese or cheese toast, just like it is right now <laughs> today. I mean, if yeah, you, they, I was as a kid, I didn't have syrup sandwiches, mayonnaise sandwiches. I was all just going to say, they don't know the syrup. struggle having to what? eat what watered down syrup. Yeah, that syrup. Oh no, or that thick cane you syrup. You said a don't syrup sandwich. <laughs> Girl, yeah, I had a syrup sandwich. 
What I remember world? many days coming home from track practice and just had a sweet tooth and one of it just made a syrup sandwich. Yeah. And it would just be bread and syrup. Uh-huh. I mean, sometimes <laughs> I would just like now nah, I would just want bread and butter. Um did you at least oh, toast guess, it? Huh? Did you at least toast it to give it a little flavor? No, I didn't. If I would like I said, if I come home, I would be already at track practice if my mom hadn't finished dinner yet. I would easily make a syrup sandwich. It wasn't a big deal. A mayonnaise sandwich, a tomato sandwich. I mean, growing up as a kid, we had all kinds of sandwiches. And like grilled I said, cheese. we didn't keep kids that grew up without sandwich. food. We, right. Grilled yeah. cheese. Mm -hmm. The tomato sandwich, I definitely remember that. Oh, my God. Don't talk about tomato yeah. soup. Tomato I soup with a um, yeah. cheese sandwich. Yeah, the cheese. As military parents, they already had checking accounts, so they had a little cushion. <laughs> Oh, okay, she talking her kids. Kenny said today's kids. Today, boss should read that because now I gotta find my glasses. That's the ones we just talked about. Kids today don't know how easy they have it. We had to literally chop wood out in the country. Oh yeah, I I never had to chop no wood, Kenny. Mm -hmm. But I didn't grow up in the country. Um, I kind of wish I had of because when I first visited mm -hmm. Mississippi. I was already 40 something and I fell in love with Mississippi. It was just too hot for me. Like it was the uh my daughter-in-law had air conditioning, but just just walking from the door to the car was almost dead like dying. That's how <laughs> hot and humid it was in Mississippi. That's like us as kids. My grandma go fishing. We already know what time it is. She's gonna pull them fish out and we finna clean them yeah. and we're gonna throw them in the deep freezer. And see, wow. I had a very different experience with that. Like the gookie stuff, my granddad would do that. Now, I was required like to catch the animal. I remember my first time trying to catch a chicken. And it was it was oh, interesting. No. It was scary. Yeah, I was older. I was like, I was probably like 11. You know, I wasn't little. Oh. I never had mm. to kill an animal either. But I remember my granddaddy used to kill, um, he used to come home with Squirrels and raccoons at my grandma's house, oh, and no. oh, he, and oh my god, I remember that. Oh, as I remember yeah. that, mm -hmm. I was probably about seven or eight. I remember that clearly. That my granddaddy would, and my grandma couldn't stand it. Oh, she would always say, Dick, why you keep on bringing them animals? She called him Dick, that was and the they said they went. good. That they, they can keep on saying it because <laughs> I ain't yeah, gonna try no sure squirrel and no raccoon. No, I've seen I barely want to clean the Kenny, have you made a uh, coon before or a squirrel? Yeah. Kenny probably did. Kenny probably had it. Yeah. I just never felt I needed to charge them for rent. Just a personal thing for me. My parents never charged me for rent. Yeah, I agree, Sonya. Um, we in the minority, but I kind of agree. I agree on both sides, whether you charge mm -hmm. them or not. Yeah, yeah, it's the situation for me. Be like, well, mama, I'm living here. I know I ain't paying no rent. Let me give you a hundred dollars here, um, to put on the light bill or something. That would be the responsibility yeah. of them. Now, yeah. my kids right. have done that. Now they, now they would, they have definitely done that. Butter and yeah. sugar sandwiches. Yeah, I remember I those too. Butter and sugar. Yes, I have a checking. Yes, I have a checking. Go ahead. No, go ahead and read them, chick. Yes, I have a check-in account for my kids and I deposit money each pay period into their account. They got their own 401k. Yep. Oh. They keep on going. That's a 401k. Oh, blessings, 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 blessings. Yep. Oh. She making it happen. Safe, brother. Oh, absolutely. Your, I believe your money should already be there stacking in your account. You rely on your credit cards for everything you fall back on your money when you want to. Yes, I have heard mm. many of my, friend, my friends of other um, races say that I don't spend any of my cash money. I charge They charge their mortgages, car notes, all kinds of stuff to credit cards. Mm. Uh, I had two credit cards in my whole life and I just like I, one, one I had when I was younger. I think the college gave it to me. I can't remember. Like the college <laughs> was just giving out credit cards to whoever. But the, the second one I got, I was an adult. But like I said, I, I hate paying things. I just hate attachments. I just really have a problem yes. with attachments. Um, 
whatever my money can buy, that's the car I'm going to drive. I, I cannot yeah. imagine yeah. in a car note every single month, let's say for, let's say for nine months or a year and you, something in your life happened and you can't pay for two months. They won't take damn car back. They don't yes, care that you I already paid you. that car so for a year. So Everything true. in my house is cash. Y'all not coming yeah. back to my door talking about yep. y'all for to repo my bed. Repo my bed. Wow. Yes. Y'all not, not going to be at work. Y'all not going to go pick my car up out the parking lot. No, no we're not doing so that. So can they repo furniture? Hell yeah, yes. they will. Ooh, yes, they will show really? up. Really? Yeah. Door. Yep. If yeah. You open that I door, had, they coming I in. I had a situation where my, I was telling myself, "Get away from the door! Don't you, don't you make a noise?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they'll come get that furniture. That's get behind why on the payment. Pay don't nothing. communicate with them. Yeah, my mom has never had a credit card. Never had a car payment. She got a car paid off. Wow. When, when she stopped driving that, her I told fiance. you I had one car payment. When I paid that bad boy off, I never got another one again in my life. I think I was 25 and I went and got a car on payments. I was driving a school <laughs> bus and I I don't know. I need to get must have been. I don't know what made me go get a car with payments, but I did. And Lord knows when I paid that car payment off, I never to this day. Day got another car loan. Never. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not looking card. to do it again. Yep. When I first got my first credit card, I was like, okay, I got some free money. When it spent that money, and then I was like getting letters in the mail, like, oh, they wanted me to pay that back. Pay. Hey, yep. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Sonia Connor said, "Money matters. I would rather have an annual income of 250k than a credit score of 800 because I can't get on a plane with the credit." can't buy food with it either but that's just me yes i i i have a um strong belief to keep cash on hand it's i have a certain amount that i always keep on hand oh because no. we oh, tornado what if the bank Ooh. closed or something yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yes Safe brother, it tastes like turkey necks to oh. me. If you ever had, it ain't no way. I love turkey necks. What, Kenny? A, a, a raccoon or a squirrel? Oh, he said oh, squirrel. squirrel. Tastes like turkey necks to me. If you've ever had, oh, Kenny, don't you I be posting uh, uh, videos necks. of you cooking squirrel? Yes, <laughs> he said he got a video. What? Oh, he really? has a video. Look at his previous comment. Oh no, Kenny, no. I'm going to find mm -mm. it. <laughs> I'm going to find it. Oh, no. That'll be the next topic. <laughs> so what? Okay. So with now, these adult children. Oh, yes. I, uh, did, was it alligator? Well, I done seen Latif eat many alligators. I, I never attempted oh, to try not good. one piece. I need I to go back like, to Florida. Give me, give me the yes, cow. The Come chicken. on down. <laughs> the cow and the chicken. Florida that's too. all I need. Yes, ma'am. Right, right, you don't eat alligator. No, no try it. Mm -mm. Try it. You in Florida? Mm -mm. Uh, uh. I can't oh imagine. Goodness, is so good. I, I keep hearing this good fried, but I, I don't think yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I don't try. Yeah. I'm not good with trying new foods. The right people got how to cook it. That's true. Yeah. I remember we, my daddy came down to Florida one day because we was it was summertime. We was about to get in the car with him and go. So he came down and he ate and he ate the alligator. He was like, you want to taste? Mm -mm, I'm good. I, and I was a kid. It at that tastes time. like chicken. You That's can't what they say. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to try the meats all together. Uh, <laughs> somebody said something about credit cards, credit scores. Now, since I've been here, my, I check my credit score regularly. And matter of fact, anyway. now that I'm speaking on it, I'm going to check on it tomorrow. My credit score was 740, right? I just checked it about a month ago. Oh, no, not every day. And I went and checked it again because I just regularly check it and it was down to six something. And I was like, how did my credit score go down? So I'm looking on the thing that shows you what there are. And that was about a month ago. My credit score has gone down to almost the low 600s. And I see the charges and they're not my charges and I'm not in the United States. So That's now true. I have to go take tomorrow to try to find out what's going on because yeah, I don't know what's up. going on. 
uh, you can call in and dispute. It's it's better to yeah. call in and dispute because you can then identify yourself. There's a way to get all that stuff off. Um, you have to make sure you have one name reporting, one address, one phone number, yeah. all that type of stuff. And Miss Miss TT can you know? <laughs> yeah, I have had one address for the last I think thirteen, almost fourteen years. Oh yes. Um, and and but now, like I said, I noticed about a month ago my score started going down, and I remember getting an email that says, uh, "Thank you for opening your Boost Mobile account." It came to my email, so I get I'm at the store at the time here in Ghana, so I immediately call. I look at the time; these people are open. I, I immediately call the number, and I said, "Yes, ma'am." I just got an email saying, "Thanks for opening the Boost Mobile account." But I said, I am currently in Africa and I didn't even know Boost Mobile still existed for one. And for two, I did not open an account. So she, I gave her my name and social security number and everything. She said, well, Kimberly, I see the account. Now, listen to this, y'all. She said, Kimberly, I see the account, but um, can you give me the code? I said, ma'am, I don't have the code. It's not my account. She said, well, I can't get into the code and give you the information if you... She said, I cannot give you the information if you don't give me the four digit code to the account. I said, ma'am, are you listening? It's not my account. I did not open the account. And after going back and forth with her, I said, you know what? Okay, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. I just hung up. I said, look, I'll deal with this. I'm telling you, lady, I did not open the account. So how am I supposed to know the fucking code? I don't right. know the code. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's using your information. Yep. Snatched it off the dark web or something. Yep. Girls probably that Sagittarius. Ain't no telling. I don't know. Welcome, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the live. Yes, yes, okay, yes. So it like we pretty much went over most of the comments. There you go, Miss Kim. It typed it. <laughs> what happened? What you said, it typed it and put it in the chat. <laughs> I'll be damned. Let me stop talking. I'm going to have to cut this thing off. Hold on. Let me stop this. Mm -hmm. that okay, I turned it off again. It keeps turning itself back on. Okay. True, Kenny. I tried to tell myself not to retaliate, though, because God can get back worse than me. Forgiveness is not as what easy was that? as people make it. Kenny was telling What was that responding to? Kenny, that forgiveness is not me. as easy as people make it, especially when people have wronged you first. Oh, yeah. And I think we touched on that. Yes. I tell, try mm, to yeah. tell myself not to retaliate through cause God can make big back worse. Some social media. I'm not it's eating no frog legs. Oh, no. <laughs> I tell I myself. Had not to retaliate through because God can get back worse than me. Oh, oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, I true. just I received you know, what the sister said the other day. I don't want to put no bad energy out there. I had to snatch myself back. So that's what I'm practicing now, just consistently. Yeah. Do me wrong. Yeah, I have to you. practice that. <laughs> Shy said butter, butter and sugar, sugar sandwiches. Yes. Yes. That's oh, why I've had those before. No, I've had butter, butter and sugar and sandwiches before. Not me. No. You, don't you know what? No, 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 no. I've never had a butter and sugar sandwiches. I've had sugar sandwiches and I've had bread and butter. I, I don't think I've had sugar and butter sandwiches. How do you have a sugar sandwich? You just it's sprinkle sugar, sugar on the bread and eat it. Yeah, you sprinkle it. That's all. Oh, That's yes, like I have. Yes, like I have. Yes, I have. With butter, I was gonna say toasted with butter and put some sugar on it. Yes, I have brown sugar. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. showing your parents that you are a proactive member of society is the best gift a child can give. I amen. Yes, agreed. Very proud parent. I made the same sandwiches we used to have the whole man to come in the early 60s in Philadelphia. What does that mean? I think that's when she was talking about it. We were talking about the different types of sandwiches earlier. I mean, and what's the cool man? Is that like a person that cold. sells sandwiches? Oh, the cold man. We used to have the cold man to come in early 60s. 
Oh, we used to have a man in uh I think I was probably about seven. We we lived in we uh before we had a regular heating system or whatever, this man would come and the truck would pull up and put coals through our window down through the basement. My parents would have to go down there like once or twice a day and throw coal into the furnace to keep the house to keep the heater going. But that's all I know. I'm, I guess that's what he's talking about. I'm not sure. What Renee? What you talk about? Open that door. They come in to get it. What? I know y'all hear my son. She's talking about the what? furniture. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know they repost. I mean, I, I other than rent a center and places like that, I I, ne I never knew people repost furniture. I see the whole video where the lady was like, uh -uh. she sat there arguing with that man. You ain't taking nothing. I'm out and then end up trying to say, oh, I may I pay y'all later. <laughs> Oh wow! Because yeah, so I've much. only seen that with Rena Center. Like I've seen my neighbors for over the years argue with Rena Center and not let them in the door and all kind of stuff. But like regular furniture, I didn't know they could repossess that. I know you put so much money in there, and they'd be like, "Oh, we coming to pick it up." Like what? Y'all not coming to get nothing? I'm going to continue to make my payments. That just kind of shocks me that people can come and repossess furniture, refrigerators, and stoves, or something like that. When you say frog legs are delicious, fried or sauteed. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, well, I can't believe they are. Barbecue, you better be cooking nothing like that. Girl, we know what it's going to look like. <laughs> Cook all the vegan foods. Um, Canon, they are good. I was surprised when I tried it for the first time. Canon, I'm not sure what that is. Um, that they tried the first time. I think he's talking about the frog frog legs. Come on down to Florida, and you can catch your own stuff fresh where I am. Must be in Lauderdale, Miami. Cocoa Beach, Daytona Beach, Key West. We have another video, y'all. I don't know where she went. Who? Can you make it bigger, boss chick, or do you, I huh? have to? Um, I probably can't. Hold on. Is it bigger? Master P's daughter, no. Tatiana Miller's cause of death has been revealed. I feel like that trip really opened my mind to see how I would miss you the most because you were always here for me. Five months following the 29-year-old and the Los Angeles coroner confirmed she died from fentanyl intoxication, confirming reports that she died as a result of drugs. We put God first. Without that man up above, we wouldn't be here. And uh, we realized that wisdom is the most important thing. And that's what we pass, we pass down from generation to generation. Back in May, Master P shared the news of Tatiana's death on Instagram, writing in the caption, quote, Our family is dealing with an overwhelming grief for the loss of my daughter, Tatiana. We respectfully request some privacy so that our family can grieve. We appreciate all of the prayers, love, and support. At the time, the rapper hinted at what may have played a part. Quote, mental illness and substance abuse is a real issue that we can't be afraid to talk about. With God, we will get through this. Spending quality time with your kids is going to make the difference. We're not a perfect family, but we love each other and we get up with integrity, thinking doing the right thing. And I tell anybody, integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. And so if you're that type of father, you're going to be all right. Tatiana's struggle with addiction was documented on WE TV's Growing Up Hip Hop. I feel like I don't need to go to rehab. I feel like I could actually do good without rehab. 
Her older brother, Romeo, who also starred on the show, was one of her biggest support systems, even when times got tough. You were supposed to be here. We put everything on hold to make sure you're okay. And you're not here. I left the celeb game early to get here. I dropped everything to get here. At the time, Romeo also shared his grief in a statement, writing, quote, we appreciate all of the prayers, love, and support, and although this is sad times, we are forever grateful for the memories we did have with our amazing sister. And while he expressed his sadness, Romeo added that he knows she's in a way better place and finally at peace and free. Coming from where I come from, coming from poverty, you would think that you would outlive your kids, and that was the mission. Yeah. And I feel like going to my daughter's funeral. I feel like I went to my own funeral. Master P sat down with Gail King in July. He opened up about turning Tatiana's painful death into an important mission. Well, I said, let me team up with, with NAMI. Let me team up with uh, ARJ Cares. Mm -hmm. uh, these, these are doctors. These are people that believe. We, I want to help people that look like us. We want to uh, bring awareness to this. We want to save. These are, my, my whole purpose is now is I don't know why you put me through this, God, and, and I'm not going to question you, mm -hmm. but I'm going to get out here and save millions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help. I'm going to do something. I think this goes back to the point where we're enabling our children. It was that a was different topic, to I think. Hmm? That was yeah, hard that to was watch. Hard. That was hard for me to watch. I didn't even I didn't even know that Master P lost his daughter, but she was very young, very beautiful, and she just probably got lost in lost in life somewhere. You know, life can mess people up, and we don't know her story. But that yeah, that was hard to watch. We have somebody new on the stage. Yes. Hello, welcome. Miss Rosie. Yes. Hi, guys. Great conversation. Really good tonight. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. Um, talking about addictions, I am an addictions counselor. I've been one for over 30 years, and it just really has been an epidemic, and um, it's really sad. I mean, I've seen his video before. I knew that his daughter had a substance abuse problem, but I just wanted to um, let the people that are in the group chat tonight to just be aware that it does affect everyone's family and mm -hmm. to just be mindful about your nieces and children and um, mm -hmm. make sure that you do your research as far as getting them the help that they need. Um, the other thing is that most people that are addicted to drugs are duly diagnosed, meaning that they are having a mental health issue and a substance abuse problem. And sometimes you'll see where they'll say, uh, substance abuse induced by mental health. If they can get hold of mental health, sometimes it'll help them work on the addiction part. So um, we're living in some trying times and um, we just have to be there to support our family members and especially with mental health. You know, um, not everybody use drugs to have a mental health, but when you find people not productive in their life, going through the same things over and over and over again, there's usually something wrong and you might want to just check in with a family member or someone that you know and just say, look, I noticed that, you know, you kind of been, you know, going through some of the same things. You're kind of angry most of the time, you know, ask them if they've been violated, ask a few questions and just let them know that you're there for them, you know? Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you for that. You're welcome. That you know, I'm, to... Go ahead. I'm that person. Uh, I am that person she described and, and, just seeing neighbors and young kids that I watched grow up in the school district I worked for and at the recreation center. Um, you can offer support and talk to them and they'll tell you their stories, but I had to learn that you cannot just, you cannot make them go get help. And most of them just won't do it. They don't either, they don't know how to do it, even though you, you can guide them and walk them through the steps. Um, you know, a lot of people just won't go get that help. And so, mm -hmm. That's where you have to just okay. detach yourself. That was the hardest part for me is watching young people that I saw grow up regular and normal just on drugs. And you don't know how, you don't know what happened, but you cannot talk them into going to get help unless they want it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. 
That brings us back to another one here. Good. Cause I've been I've been looking for you for the last three four hours. You ain't doing nothing wrong. No. I'm serious. So you need to get serious. This is a serious situation going on. I think when people hide that they have a problem, they'll never overcome it. This is something she wanted to do. This is not something that I wanted to do. She was like, Dad, I want to be better. I want to get myself together. Dad don't want to have to be super tough for you, but guess what? If you're not responding, if you're not testing back, we don't know what's going on. Uh -huh. Anything could happen. Yeah, you could have been dead. You could have been in jail, anything. You lost my trust. And to gain it back, then you got to start telling the truth. We're going to have to take this drug test. Come on. Uh, I, I'll holler at you later, bro. All right. I think this is when she was trying to, like, move back home. And he was like, if you need my help, if you want my help, this is my rules. What that lady was saying in the last video. Right. You have to set yeah. your own rule. And then it's right. still, she ended up passing. Mm. And then you wonder, like, how was her life different from Romeo's? Like, what went wrong? What went left with her to where she ended up in a, in a different situation? Because you can have, you know, five kids raised by the same mom and daddy. Mm -hmm. You got that one kid that's yeah, just different. That one kid. Yep. I wonder if it was mm. the crowd or something that she hung out with. Yeah, I did not know about that at all until right now. What year was this? Maybe about a, a, over a year ago, maybe. You know, these times go by so mm. fast. That's mm. what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This says two years ago. Okay. Oh, so that was recent. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was definitely sad. Mm. We have a comment, boss chick. Can you read it? I don't have my glasses. Which one? Uh, uh, I don't. It went. It went away. Your video was believable. Okay, your video was believable. Okay, thank you. Uh, shh, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Any more comments or questions about uh, the adult children? No, yeah, I'm done. Who said that? Rosie. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming up, Rosie. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was nice. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Hey, earlier today I had a conversation with teenagers uh, while they were in the car with their parents and just talking about being respectful. Twitter blew up, uh, Facebook, Morning Show website. Everybody wanted me to replay the conversation that I had earlier. Here it is. Hope y'all enjoy it. Rick Smiley Morning Show. Hey, man, I just want to have a word with the kids. All you wonderful teenagers that's probably on the way to school or in the cars with your parents right now, especially if you, you know, you got a, a single parent. And I talk about this because I'm I'm going through it. Don't, don't think for a minute just because I'm on the radio and, you know, we got a little, little hot TV reality show that we don't go through stuff. There's some stuff that go down when the cameras ain't around. And I don't want to tell y'all kids out here, man, that, that have a single parent, man. Your mama sitting up here going to work every day, doing her thing, putting up with people crap, dealing with customer service, dealing with patients and lifting and all this kind of stuff, man. Some of y'all out here don't even know how good y'all got it. And y'all don't even understand what, what most of y'all parents went through just where you could have what you have. Everybody that's in the car with your mama right now, look down at your feet and look at your, and pull your pants leg up and look at your shoes and your socks. Your parents don't went and spent a hundred, couple hundred dollars on shoes. You got nice jeans and you got nice clothes and, and half of y'all ain't even riding the bus getting dropped off at school today. You are so blessed. You have way more than we ever had. And, I'm, and I can say all this stuff, man, because I'm from the projects. I'm from Kingston Project. We, were, we grew up on Section 8. And then to have kids to say something back. If your parents say something to you, man, only thing you need to do is say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. We didn't ask you who put the shoes in the floor. We said get the shoes out the floor. 
even when you explain something is a is a slight way of being disrespectful and talking back and i want y'all to understand something every time you talk back to your parents man you cutting your days short the bible said honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the land the lord thy god giveth thee it's in the bible and i'm telling you man you around here become a teenager you ain't bought nothing you don't pay no bills you don't pay no rent you ain't you, we have to make you clean up we have to make you take half y'all take a bath we have to make you take the garbage out on mondays and fridays or tuesdays and thursdays whatever whenever the garbage is supposed to go out sit up in the house you got brand new phones you got iphones you got all these social media accounts and, and, and a lot of y'all are just not respectful and i ain't just talking about just a couple of this uh um that's in my house i see it i see it with a lot of y'all teenagers and i'm telling you something man you go you go you gonna mess around here because some of your parents are in their 30s some of them are in their 40s and you better think about how you treat your mom and your dad especially if you got a single parent because a lot of them, one of my best friends dad went to sleep the other night and didn't wake up you understand it ain't guaranteed that your parents gonna always be here how you think you're going to feel when they roll your mom and your daddy casket out of that church? And you only thing you're going to be left is to sit back and reflect on how you treated your parents that went to work every day to give you everything. Everything. Y'all got everything. Y'all are so blessed. It seems like the more money y'all parents make and the more y'all have, the more unappreciative and disrespectful y'all are. I know... I got a college kid right now. I got a nephew who I've been raising the past 10 years. His dad got killed. T. West played college football at Middle Tennessee State University. Probably, probably can take me and dust my whole house with me and whoop me up and down the hall if he wanted to. And here go a kid that went to Clay Chalkville High School ain't never gave me a problem, ain't never talked back, ain't never whispered a mumbling word, and his brother TJ that go to Miles College, I raised both of these boys for 10 years, ain't never then sat up there and buried their father, TJ in the ninth grade Terrell, 8 years old they dad laying up there in the casket, little girl Genesis they go to Ramsey High School sitting up there couldn't even cry for her own mother's funeral because she was too busy trying to comfort her grandmother. She don't have nobody but her grandmother. She got an uncle that lives in Houston, and she got me. And for some of y'all kids that got everything and disrespectful, I'm emotional right now for all parents that have to put up with this crap. And the only thing we're trying to do is save your life keep you from getting killed because if your attitude bad you don't even know how to handle yourself exactly. if you get pulled over by the police sit at the table with your phones won't talk won't clean up the kitchen want to text be on social media all day i'm just gonna tell you straight up all oh, y'all wrong and i'm gonna tell you man some of y'all y'all little boys around here pants sagging ain't respectful cussing out your teachers I feel bad for teachers. I'm an education major. I wouldn't dare walk in the classroom. <laughs> I feel bad for teachers. I want y'all to know and understand, God sit high and look low. He's watching you. Every time you disrespect a grown person, you are cutting your days short. short. Honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long. See, my daddy disrespected my grandparents. And I was one of them kids that sat there on that front row uh, while my daddy was in that casket. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna sit up here and just fake the funk. My daddy wasn't right. He didn't do what was right. And at 26 years old, he was gone and left a seven-year-old son. And then my mama had to figure it out and my grandparents had to figure it out. Sit up there and watch my grandparents on the front row crying like that and going through what they was going through because you decided not to make the right decision. You have an opportunity of a lifetime to educate yourself and make something happen. Do the right thing, kid. Respect your parents, man. Your parents ain't gonna always be here. They ain't gonna always be here. And if you mistreat your parents and something happened to them, you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So 
I hope that touched somebody today, some teenager in the car. Hug your mama, hug your daddy when you get home. Clean up your room, do what's right. Make good grades. That's all you have to do. All you have to do. Ricky Smile the Morning Show. I'm gonna do this here every now and then. We're gonna have some real conversations on here. Ricky Smile the Morning Show. No, know how appreciative your parent is until you lose them. Yep, yep. I mean, mine's is still here, but I, I understand. I understand. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think before I would do, I, I have. I'm not just my parents, but elders, period. Miss Kim. I think we lost Miss Kim. Anybody like to come up and add to the conversation? Ricky Smiley was telling the truth. Yeah, I feel like he's saying what the parents can't say um, when it's a child um, or an individual. I'll call it dependent because there's so many different people that need to be supported nowadays that we go that people might go through this with. So those people who aren't receiving that uh, gratitude, at least it's not like I expect you to reciprocate the help. Like I'm helping you to maintain your whole life. So I, I don't expect you to be able to pay my bills. No, right. but I do expect you to show me gratitude in the least. Yeah. Can you hear me? I have to get back on the phone again. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You were saying the elders? Okay. Uh, the elders are very disrespectful here in Ghana. And I just really hate that for grown men, because like I said, I have, I've seen these elder elders so disrespectful to adults these are adult men with wives and children that just get talked down on by these by by their elders and it's sickening and it, the, the amount of respect that they have is amazing to me because i don't think the things i've seen i don't think i could have done it i just really don't i think that there was a there was a there, there comes a time and place when you have to say look Look, uh, brother Akua, Kofi, whatever your name is, I am a grown man with a wife and a child, and you can no longer talk to me like that. But they will not at all say anything. The kids? The, no, we're talking about grown men. No, no, I'm talking about like a 38-year-old, 40-year-old man I have seen get disrespected by a 50, 60, 70-year-old elder. And these young people that's 30 and 40 will not open their mouth to talk back to their elders. They just won't do it. I have never seen them do it. I mean, it's been to a point where I've gotten so angry. I wanted to say something like, who the hell is you talking to this man like this? This is a grown man. How dare you think you can talk to this man like this? But they're taught to shut up and be quiet when it comes to their elders. And back in the day, see, we knew not to speak when our parents was in the living room talking, having a conversation. We knew out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Go couldn't sit room. around grown people. We couldn't. We could not sit around grown mm -hmm. people. We could not sit around grown people. You know, I know my granddaughter. Uh, she's not disrespectful at all. But I remember her. She, I, she had. I. I don't know what all she had connected, but I think she had a Bluetooth connected. Could. It was a whole bunch of people laughing in her room and giggling and having fun, a bunch of girls. So I knocked on the door like, how did these people get in the room? Like, I'm sitting in the living room, and I and she's not a child to sneak people in the window. So I'm thinking, well, how did all these people get in the room? So I knocked on her door and go in, and I, she looked at me. I was like, how did you, what is, what is all them, where's all them people at? She said, Grandma, we're having a movie party. I'm like, but where I, can, I hear people laughing. All these, they were having a girls' movie night on her iPhone connected to the Bluetooth. And I have no idea to this day how all of them was connected to one movie, but she just looked at me. She didn't look at me disrespectful. She just looked at me like, 
I was supposed to know how she did that. And to this day, I swear I don't know. But they was it was girls giggling and laughing and everything. And I thought they were in the room, but they were all on her, on the iPhone just having a movie night. Shit, I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, Probably it was like a chat room. It was a chat room. Yeah, my daughter does that. I, the first time she oh, did it, I had the same reaction. Room. Oh, yep. Okay, I didn't know what was going on. Okay, okay. Hey, man, I told you not to do it. Dang, man. I'm sorry. I'm sure I'll be fine. Yeah, right. I know I'm right. <laughs> I believe I can yep. <laughs> not be great. Dang it, not again. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, can you please drop me back at the airport? We did it again. Look, trying them parents. Y'all don't yep. know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Should look like he slapped him back. To that looked like a Detroit house he landed in front of. Like she crazy, cursing at her, telling her what you won't do. You won't clean your room. You won't do what you want to do. And you talk to your mother like that? Like you tough? Do you think you tough, little man? Talk to me like you talk to your mother. Talk to me. You think you tough, don't you? Bust up on me. Cuss me out. Tell me you ain't going to do what I say to you. I dare you. I dare you. You ain't going to do it to me? Why you do it to her? Why you talk to her disrespectfully? Why? Little boy, answer me. Why do you talk to your mother disrespectfully? You don't know why you do it. Today, I'm going to help you find out why. And today it ends. Today it ends. Do you understand? You will not call your mother out of her name ever again. Sometimes it just takes for somebody else to step in to, to make these kids wake up and realize because I don't know if it's they're watching other kids. Like, where are you getting but this you from? Know, there, you... there was a time when, you know, we, ha we had uncles. We can, Our parents had uncles they could call. Daddy, yeah, it took a uncle, village. But a man across the street, you, you wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare. Mm. Yeah, I remember uh, my grandma's uh, neighbor telling on us when we did stuff. Oh wow, that's deep. Now I haven't had that experience. Um, yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, they, they. You probably did. didn't know it. <laughs> Jump through I the window. Have my kid called me out my name, not where I. Oh could no, hear no, no, oh right. no, no, no. We talking about the experience where you had the neighbors. Call oh yeah, you. I definitely had to. Oh yeah. I, oh I no, yeah. Nosy neighbors. <laughs> neighbors. Nosy neighbors. Yep. I can't. My daughters her. have never done. They've never called me. But out it my takes name. a village because what if that was somebody else jumping through that window? <laughs> yeah, well, that's True. what I wanted to know. What what if it was Ray Ray down the street? You was you was gonna be sleep during that time, but you saw me climbing to my own window and called my mom and told her. Like I didn't understand. To, right now, as a grown woman, you saw me that you saw grow up from a baby. You saw me climb through my own window and you felt the need to call my mama. It wasn't like I was home from school earlier. Nothing weird was happening. You you think that she would have understood, like, oh, she must have forgot her key. But, yeah, she sure did. I'm climbing through my own window, and I hear the phone ring. Answer the phone. It's my mama. The neighbor done called her and told her I was climbing through my bedroom window. And I just thought that was crazy. But them is the th those are the nosy neighbors that we need now, you know. That's the every damn thing. It takes a village. Yep. That on Hello there and welcome back to Midlife Crisis. I'm Cheryl. As you could see, it's nighttime. It's very, very busy right now for us, but I wanted to stop and talk to you about an epidemic that I realize is taking place amongst us women. And that is 
dealing with adult children. What is your experience right now? Are you having any kind of experiences with your adult children? Are they in your home and is being disrespectful and or parasitic? There are a lot of instances happening, which is why I decided I would stop and talk to you about that. And if it is happening, if you do have that scenario, I am here to tell you, you've got to fix it. You know, we love our children and we go the extra mile and sometimes we don't pay attention to what's happening. And then it turns out where that respect is gone. It's gone and it gets to a situation where it just gets worse and worse. So if you are dealing with that, you've got to fix it because it has no better to get and you do not want to get sick because too many instances are happening where women such as us, because I've had some experiences myself, wind up with some kind of disease uh -huh. and ultimately die. You do not want that to happen. It's not worth it. You've already done your job in raising your children. Love them, but take care of yourself. That is the motto at Midlife Rises, because if you try to battle with something like that, there is no way that you can take care of yourself and bloom at the same time. And this is not being selfish. It's just that we are now in our midlife and there are certain things you can't do as well as you did years ago. So make that adjustment and love your children, but try to take care of yourself because they're not going to be any more grateful than they are now. And you're just going to wind up hurting yourself. Is it worth it? You've got to ask yourself, okay? If you are dealing with children, adult children, that are not showing you the respect that you know you're due, or it's a parasitic situation where they're living in the household and they're just draining you of your energies and not doing the right thing, because you can have your children in your home, but they need to be doing something. They can't just be relaxed. Do not allow something like that to be happening. <laughs> so if you are in that situation, you've got to fix that. As women, you know, it's very hard to not give that love, but you, it, there has to be a point where you decide to kick out that tough love. Because the disrespect, you know, we're dealing with these children from a different generation and the respect needs to be there. You've got to make some adjustments to have your peace because that's the only way you're going to be able to take care of yourself and bloom. Subscribe to the channel by clicking on the bell icon so that you'll be notified of our weekly videos. We've got stuff like this coming constantly and you don't want to be left behind because knowledge is power. I agree. Definitely you have to it, this go back to where it says if it's the kids is, you know, causing you stress or being unruly it's nothing else to do but to, for your peace and sanity tell them they have to go Th that's the door yeah because at that point it's toxic when it starts to make you feel some type of way about you and you know affect you in a negative manner like how she was saying with your health uh-uh and the kids will be the ones to stress you out yeah because they draw Mm -hmm. Cause they what? They draw on that uh, emotional factor, like oh, it's it's my parent. They're gonna always, you know. Mm -hmm. Like oh, they they, they they're reliable to take care of me. Exactly. Right. No, exactly. after this you get a certain age, I don't try to help you get up to where you need to be at. But now at this point, it's like you need to get out there and on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, there has well, to be was... uh, boundaries and and uh, what do you call them? Um, deal breakers. There has to be somewhere in there. There's a deal breaker. This there's is the a deal boundary, breaker, yeah. and there's, it's not questions. You're out of here. Once you do that, you're out. You're done. Well, this was a good live. I do want to say thank you, everybody, for joining. Any other questions or comments? Anybody want to come up and say anything before we end this stream? Can you say I'm that uncle? My nieces and nephews knew. All I had to do was look at them. Exactly, Kenny. That's what we need. People look, like just you. Just that stare. Yep. They gonna straighten up. Well, it was definitely nice. Well, we're gonna go ahead thank and you, end this. Thank uh, you, Hero Fat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is 12.45 a.m. here in Ghana, West Africa. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you returning, for returning back to the Chemosphere. Thank you for my new members. And um, 
we're going to go ahead and let Boss Chick end this live, and we will see you on our next one. Thanks for coming in.